Sweet. We're on. Copy. Can you sh- I copied the streaming link. There's always some fuckery. Hang on. Bloody hell. Let me go over here. Instagram. <clears throat> we'll have it smooth one day. I can't do a story on Instagram. I can't mm-hmm. do it off the computer. For fuck's sake. Oh, Jesus Christ. Josh is out. You give it a go. Can you hear yeah. the link? Um, I'm just seeing if we got it on the fucking... Oh, actually, do you know what I can do? This is technology at its best. I can send you a message. Paste the link. There you go. Fucking way! Look at us interwebsing. Yeah, so I haven't got the message yet. It's in the chat, in cool messages. I sent you a message in the chat. Bruh. Mm-hmm. You got it? You got it? Shut up. There it is. Look at it. Uh, la, 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 la. Fun times. Oh, in this chat? Yes, this chat. <laughs> Crossed. Fucking hell, I haven't opened this chat ever. Right, let me turn off the fucking light. Oh, let me switch that one. Yeah, look at that mood lighting. We're in. Josh is back. Roll dog. I can start the record. <laughs> Oh, look at that. I can't copy it. Can't copy it? No. Uh, Open okay. it, but then I can't get the chair thing. This is great viewing. Send it in the fucking... Send it in the chat for us. Can I do that? I can't do that. I'm on the fucking laptop, bro. What do you yeah. need to do? Nothing. Oh, Jesus. This is a fail. Someone, if someone's watching right now, then. It's like at this point. This techno- <laughs> the technologically retarded boys. I can't see the live on um, my side on my phone. Well, there's one thing I can say is, hot damn, this spiker jacket works. It's fucking hot in here. I yeah. did have a theater on in here before, man. Oh. <laughs> Hang on, I'm, taking, I'm sending it to myself. Oh, wait. All right, now I can do it. It'll, we lied. Yeah. All right. Don't tell my icon's pink because I'm back and forth. Don't tell anyone your password. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did you sort it? Yep. I'm about to post it. Are oh, you posting it? Oh, sweet. Oh, I'm um, fucking the story. Hang on. Um, yeah, why is my fucking camera? Put your camera back. Right. Put your camera back on, bro. There we go. Look at you. Fuck that off. Oh, jeez. Turn the camera off, man. Someone has to keep an eye on uh, the YouTube chat. That would be you. <laughs> nah, I- yeah. My phone. I'm using the phone as a camera. I can't. Someone can do it. Josh can do it. Josh can do it. Oh, the YouTube chat. Yeah. How, how do you yeah. do that? Go, to the go, onto the YouTube, go on to YouTube. Right. Onto the YouTube. Not in as Cindy. I don't even know. Yeah, this, this is going to take longer. Cool. Well, it's on our story. Okay, there's a there's a chat on YouTube. 
No, the in the log. Oh, yeah, podcast right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, do yourself a favour, Josh, and mute it. Mute it. <laughs> it's on silent. How he's not connected to how, the. How do you get the comments up? It's press comments. Oh, I go into it. There you go. All right. Send it. There you go. Now you can just. Why is Couchy's icon pink? <laughs> it's because my, it's my camera was close. Uh, good. Oh, well, we better actually start the podcast. We better. We better. Should we? Yeah. All right. Enough fuckery. Let's start the shit. Yeah, boy, we are back alive. <laughs> we go on Rastafari. We are. Time. This is not. <laughs> yeah, man. We be Rastafari. No, this is. That's, a, that's my. Oh, oh fuck, that's my best go-to fucking Jamaican accent. That was your best intro, to be honest. A lot of the energy that you're kicking off, mate. <laughs> yeah. You've done well. I don't know how you got Jamaican out of whatever the fuck accent I was doing initially. <laughs> I rolled with it. Well, no, it sounded, it sounded Rastafari in my, my headphones, mate, but I am partially deaf, so. Well, that's because you're... Okay. Oh, fuck, these are loud. I'm going to turn these ones down. I'll put your headphones on while you're not here, Couch, because I left mine in the other room, and they sound different. Yeah. Anyway, Naturally. This, this is what happens when you go live again. Yeah. Which is once again against my will. <laughs> I'm just not feeling the just, It opens it up for a lot of fuckery. So it does. The beauty, it's going to be interesting again. The beauty of three people is it's a two two versus one vote is the majority rule. Exactly. It's very easy. It is. That, that's yeah. what makes it easy, that's for sure, but I'm still against it. And I've got to watch my P's and Q's because apparently the last live video I said something inappropriate. <laughs> well, not apparently. You did, and it's recorded, and it's online. No, so there's no hiding from it. I didn't because it was in jest. And I'm going to defend myself till the day I die. Well, you wouldn't be Josh if you didn't. Well, is it in jest <laughs> or are you defending it? Like, make your mind up. Maybe it was both of you. Anyway, about the 13-minute <laughs> mark, Josh fucking was just unruly last week. If anyone who wants to go look it up and then just absolutely shit on him for being nasty. Anyway, it's that was last week. That's in the past. We've moved on. It's been a whole other week since then. We've been working. We've been up in Queensland again. Bloody couches joining us via Google Meet. Yep. Beard's growing back. It's getting there. Another week or two. It'd be right. Yeah. Can you put some fertilizer on it to speed things up or something? Mate, good things come in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm drinking bloody. I like trying things. Bearded Lady Bourbon, eight percent. That mu- oh no, that's US. We covered this already. Two point four standard drinks in a can. Oof. That's decent. Not bad. I just had a brain fart because there's a cafe in. Victor Harbour is called the Bearded Lady. And for some reason, I just thought, they're making whiskey now, but like not more than 15 minutes ago, we were talking about it, and it's made in the States. It's made in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, it goes all right. goes all right. So, um, yeah, we'll see how we go after four of them. The 12 percenters we need to try this weekend at Deer Camp. We should, actually. They do, yeah, they do a 12 percent, so. Oof, let's do it. I don't know how many standards that is, but it'd be over three. So, but there's no holding back. Look, it'll be a new can before the last one's empty. Are we planning on shooting deer or what? No, this is yeah. in the evening when, when the guns evening, are in the hung, evening hung up. The guns are away. Yeah. Responsibly, evening like before the night shoot. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, not night shoot, but afternoon shoot. Let's face it. There's always a lunch beer and breakfast beer and. Because you need the carbs. We might as well just uh, do it Saturday night and then just rule out Sunday morning hunt and then go home. Well, we could if we all get something. So it's going to be bangity, bangity, bang. Saturday. Everything Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, Everything. Josh. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one that's got to actually follow through with that. Well, I, no, for you to. I'll, I'll give it up for you to. No, don't do that. 
No, I will. Definitely. What are you giving up? Oh, he's giving up deer. He's gonna he's gonna see deer when he's not hunting with us, and then try and mosey on back, saying he's hurrying. And then he gave it up for our opportunity. We were three k's away. We haven't spoken about That's... this. We're gonna we're all gonna split because I know where I'm probably wanting to go. I and do. It, I do too. It's probably not far from where Caleb wants to go. <laughs> Oh, no, we'll, we'll dep- agree on a different location to you. We will consult beforehand. Okay. But I think there's no point in us walking around holding hands and skipping through the fucking bushes. No, nah, it's most of a split because then you got more of a chance. There's yeah, reception too, so it's we can message a, each other. It's not an overly big place, so we'll blow out the area pretty quick if we all split. Man, it's only a day, really. A day and a half. True. It's fine. Well, yeah, we got to get a plan of attack because, yeah, it's not a massive property. We don't want to push everything off. So I reckon we just quickly get into position and sort of don't move around too much. Yeah, it's probably a good spot. And yeah. Don't suck around. If nothing comes, if nothing's coming out Saturday morning or late afternoon, we can always push in, go for a wander on the open plains. Can do, but that's why reception's great because we can consult each other live. And we've, speaking of live, we've put Josh on. Like right now. <laughs> We've put Josh on YouTube comments. We, we, well, you have. <laughs> Our fellas forgiven me, actually, for my comment last week. So thank you very much. Mepit. Mepit. <laughs> Mepit. Um, <laughs> tell us about these weekend hunt arrangements, please. Oh, uh, and, uh, I can't be fucked. He's, he suggested carrying a walkie-talkie as well. I, none of us can be fucked on that, especially the fact mm. that trying to be silent while you're hunting and then someone jumps on the two-way and you're about to take a shot, that's just going to blow your cover. Yeah, that's a good thing about a phone and you can have it on silent. You're still going to be able to see the message after they've sent it. A UHF or a walkie-talkie, you've got to turn that thing down and you're guaranteed to miss if something was tried to be said at the wrong time. True. And having said that, we've all hunted together a fair bit. And the place that we go to, you have to mark your name down on what area or like your area of operation is, and you can't go outside that area of operation once you mark down your in that time allocated. So th- that would mix the we've all hunted together. We're all pretty, you know, switched on in the fact that all right, we're not going to shoot in your direction and all the rest of it. So it's minimising risk, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. That and we'll be rocking the blaze orange. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen some of those turkey hunters in the States get shot, man? Oh, and they wear <laughs> yeah, that's the blaze orange suit. Oh, that's the state. <laughs> and actually, from what I hear, public land in New South Wales, people just see movement and shoot. It's just... Yeah. That's concerning, oh, hey? It is concerning because, I mean, as much as I read the fact I haven't just fucking pulled the trigger at times, like, quickly, it's generally because I'm checking what's behind the target what I'm actually shooting at. We also know a lot of the times if you're the only one in the area. Yeah. Like you, you typically have hunted it for a couple of days or something and you're like, or it's private property and you're like, yeah, okay, well, no one else is supposed to be here. Yeah, I mean, if you've, you've hunted somewhere a lot, then you're controlling the variables. You generally, you're not having to scan to see what's behind the shot, whatever, because you just know, cause you know where you are. Mm. So there's less thought going into a property you're familiar with. Yeah. Next minute, yeah, he goes back to Brisbane with a bottle in his leg. <laughs> but what I was going to say was, like, public land hunting is is something you definitely have to consider with behind the target because that's that's what causes a lot of this shit. So, yeah, you are right. Private, private land, private land's fine. I guess you you know the lie of the land and all that. But public land, you don't know when someone's going to be there. You you are right, but what what we just alluded to, if you've been there for a few days, you sort of got an understanding in your immediate area of who's there or who might be there uh, or who's going to come in. Like if you'll go to some of these spots where we hunt, mate, you're not – no one – average Joe's not going there. You're not going there for a fucking Sunday mm-hmm. hike. Right? You're just not. No. Nah. It's too far out of your way. You'd go somewhere closer probably with a, a few more amenities or infrastructure around. So you can sort of get a little bit of a gist and be like, all right, yeah, we're fairly by ourselves. Wow, that didn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> we're fairly by ourselves. 
<laughs> we're by ourselves within reason. Or yeah. you can still identify your target, but you can sort of cut down some of that that risk. Yeah. True. And uh, for those, anyone who's wondering, if you've seen our Instagram, there's a reel on there which starts with a lovely fireplace and Josh and I cooking up a rather hodgepodge meal of two-minute noodles and what do we have? Lamb. Um, yeah, we're going back to that that property. So we'll be staying in the hut on the bunk beds. I'm sure Josh is going to try and crash by the fire again, but I'm actually keen to get around the fire. There's room for two, but not three. And I've shotgunned one spot. Well, I just did it for you. Yeah, correct. Now, look, honestly, there's enough there's enough warmth in that hut. In that back room, in my little sleeping bag. We'd be out. This is where we're going to where me, you, and Jacob went. Hey, yeah, yeah, okay. I had the wrong property in mind. I didn't go with you, though. What? I didn't go with you. I went down the road. That was Jacob's missus, you, and him. Mm. Oh no, yeah, that's. I had the right property in mind. Yeah, all right. It's just all blurring into one. You hunt so much, mate. It is. <laughs> no, I just fucking, I'm shit with names regardless of the people or places. So, yeah. I mean, one was a different gender. So, I don't know who should be offended Jacob's missus or Josh. <laughs> um, Jacob's missus should be offended. <laughs> yeah. <I'd say> so. <laughs> <laughs> just log bores there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, it'd be good to have you in SA for a bit, man. You've uh, been away again. So, yeah, yeah. good to be back. You'll be back four days again. Yeah, fly in for four days and head back off Monday. So should be good. What's I was going to say, like we got like Friday night through to Sunday morning, so that's most of my home time. What better way so, to spend it? Seems like exactly. a quick rotation this time. A swing. Oh, well, yeah. it's because I drove up a week earlier last time, so I was yeah. here for three weeks. Yeah. Hmm. Seems like it's flown by. It has. So we'll go down Friday night, get ourselves set up, get the fire cranking. Bloody oath. What's the plan? Sunday, Saturday morning, pre-dawn? Yeah. In position? Yeah. We're going to be there before sun's even trying to come up. What's, uh, yeah, what time? What time's I feel like well, we're here at 6 a.m. That's Queensland time. I know. So <laughs> That's no good to anyone. The only reason I know that is because I watched yeah, the time at work. Well, the days are still pretty short. So, yeah, maybe 6 or 5.50. It's about it's around then. Yeah. So, Sunrise half past 7 at the moment here. No, that'll be full rise. So yeah, it'll be at rise. least 7, right. 6.50 maybe. Yeah, first law. I reckon we want to be in position at six thirty. Yeah, we'll go with that. Six rather be earlier than late. Rather be earlier than late. No, you want to be up, up first law, out the door before first law. Yeah, I'm saying in position by six thirty. Oh, yeah. yeah, hopefully before that. But yeah, but if first light is like twenty to seven, yeah, you probably want to be a little earlier. Anyway. You're just like, well, Look, I, don't, we'll, I don't want to get up early. We'll calculate this is, this is our organisational skills for hunting. <laughs> this is for those people that are actually watching. This is how planning yeah. happens. So we work out when the sun's up, and then you work out how long it takes to get ready if you want to go coffee or you want to forgo coffee. No, no, coffee. No, you go is, coffee. Uh, yeah. Coffee's essential, let's be yeah. honest. Breakfast is, eh, take a fucking yeah. muesli bar or whatever with you in your bino harness. Well, you can get away with, it. yeah, just a, a quick bite on the moon. But coffee, on the moon? No. On the move. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I swear you said on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and then, then coffee is essential to, like, get, get your body moving. 100% it is. I don't know who can actually operate without coffee. And if they could, you can't trust them. They're demons. If, if they can, yeah, they're, they're just evil. Don't trust them. And a lot of people go with tea, but I can <clears> tell you, every <throat> time I run out of coffee and I'm like, fuck. Oh, I'll grab a tea bag. It just doesn't do it. It's not the same. No, it's not no, the same. It's, the same. it's yeah. not that dirty fucking brown water. It's just <laughs> the tang of tea and antioxidants. It's no good. Yeah, you can't be a toter, mate. Stuff like that. No, exactly. All right, well, let's hope we fucking knock something Saturday morning. Well, yeah, I was thinking, if if I do knock something, there's no no point in me taking the meat. 
So you guys get it. So, yeah, well, I'll buy you. I'll buy you meat. (laughs) (laughs) I'll cut your deal. I'll store your meat fridge with your meat in it. Done. (laughs) Sounds good. We bring the receipt, right, and cut steaks up. We'll we'll just divvy it accordingly. And yeah, Caleb can look after your share. Look after meaning eat. Yeah. Uh, look, I've got a still got a bit of fellow actually. I'll bring that from the last time. You, oh, well, there's Saturday's meal taken care uh, of. So no I don't know what cuts it is, but I'll bring it. Then oh. again, actually, if anyone's listening, because you hear of hunters going away freezing their meat when they come home and fly with it. So that might be an option. I could bring up some venison back up to Briz. You could Just freeze it and then chuck it in. I'm guessing you'd foil it, then chuck it in a cool bag or something, and then chuck it in a carriage. You could probably take it on carry on, even man, if it's in a cool bag. They stop you in security, they're like, um, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and it starts thawing out mid flight and just has that meat smell. Nah, if you've frozen it or snap frozen it. And then there's like a ice box in there. I think it'll be all right. I don't. I don't think it's going to thaw out in three hours. Nah, but by the time you you know leave home, get here, that's like five. But yeah, it's still it's still within reason. We'll take some up to Daniel because he said good day. Yeah, I really need to catch up with him again. <laughs> Not again. I really need to catch up with him. No, he's in, he's in the chat now. He's in the chat now. He's in the chat now. Ah, yeah. He knows you're in Queensland, bro. <laughs> I'm not in Queensland, man. Um, they're lying. But, uh, yeah, I didn't even catch up with him. He's on home detention. Hey. hey? He's on home detention. We weren't joking the other week when he had the wife beat on. <laughs> oh, crikey. Oh, dear. Yeah, I've seen a yeah. few fellas kicking around actually in the gym. With ankle bracelets on, so a strangest thing because you'll see these guys, and typically they'll wear, you know, or obviously you track pants time. or whatever. But then it'll be a hot day, and they'll wear shorts, and go like, you got, they've got lots bright red fucking <laughs> light on their ankle, and you're like, ah, <laughs> I could have picked yeah. it, but I didn't want to stereotype you. What is the radius on your home D fucking bracelet? I get a feeling they're allowed to go to work so that they've got to put it in like a form or something where you can go to work and you can go to the gym um, like and you have routes. to be home at a certain time or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, agreed probably locations and routes, mm. yeah. So, I mean, in your, in my mind, fuck, that's, that's a Joshism, but in my mind I think of um, like being on home detention, you've got your braces on like, as soon as you get past a certain point in your, in your yard, this is what they show on fucking movies and shit. Yeah, starry. Front gate. It's like the <laughs> cops appear out of nowhere. But in reality, it's probably much different. Because, um, yeah, you've got to do stuff like, if you're allowed to, go to work or go to the gym. It's not much of a fucking home detention, though, is it? it, it it's, just, it's, just, oh, it's just tracking and just knowing your whereabouts at all times. Yeah. They'll probably stop using them these days and just hook up their phones. What bracelet? And then again, you could just you could just uh, leave your phone. Your phone at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, People don't do that though. But yeah. That's true. I mean, there's fucking there's your if you're going to commit a crime, firstly, don't fucking take your phone. <laughs> I was thinking about it the other day actually. Like, if you are actually going to commit a crime and you do the whole thing with your phone in your pocket, but there's the first way they can trace where you've been, like, and put you in and around wherever you, this. You ha- you have to have a burner phone, hey. Well, do you even need to take it? Yeah, I think maybe just leave all the electronics at home. But then again, shit hits a fan and you need your, someone to pick you up and get you out of the Dodge. How? How do you do that? Well, are they going to do that if you're committing a crime? Because that would make them an accessory. Yeah, but they're mates of a fucking criminal. They're probably probably half their idea as well. <laughs> There's a lot of stereotyping going on here. <laughs> I think I think you'd just be safe for leaving your phone at home, and if you needed to, yeah. just go to a payphone and make sure there's no cameras watching the payphone. That's the hard thing these days is trying to do anything without getting on camera. Mm. You can't do it in the cities. It's, it's 
pretty much impossible in the cities. Yeah, the city, you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah, like ATMs in country towns. Fucking, yeah. You just can't. You can't win. Like, it just reminds me of that show. What was that show? Yeah, I was trying to think of a name because I'm like, yeah, we've all watched it. Um, I want to say Wanted, but. Maybe. The one on, was it Channel 7 or Channel 10? One or two. Either way, they drop all these people in Fed Square in Melbourne and they all scatter across Victoria and then try and find them. Hunted? Chase? chase. Hunted, yeah. Hunted. Hunted? Yeah. Mm. Hunted. Mm. It was a good show, actually. I liked it, other than the fact that everyone who was trying to escape had a fucking cameraman chasing them around everywhere. So if yeah, you're the cops pretty obvious, yeah. and you're in this control center looking at CCTV and there's someone being followed around by a camera person, like, mm. See, I'm surprised how dumb some of those people like the mistakes some of those people make, like little things like using a credit card or staying at your mum's house or, you know, something like that. Like, you, there's not too many of them, too many of them that think outside the box a little bit and go, okay, well, everything's trackable these days. I mean, I've thought about it to some degree. And I'm like, the first thing you do is just use that credit card and take all the cash they allow you out straight yeah. away. So you don't have to use it again. And they know where you are first up anyway. Well, at least the Australian one. They yeah, yeah. know where you are, so just do it and run. If you can avoid getting pinged for a location later on. Do it. And then surely you just fuck off Bush. I mean, in reality, if you're a fugitive, you'd steal a car. Are you allowed to on that show? No, nah, you can't. <laughs> you actually have to declare that you're... But, a, it's a bit Mickey Mouse, but there's like a slow uh, fucking saying they've got to d- declare to people. It, to see whether they'll take them on a ride. Yeah, or not. I am a fugitive or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fugitive or something like that. Oh, are you for real? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? So the person still has to agree, but he's not going to agree. Like, oh fuck, I can be on TV. And then you like they jump in your car and then you kidnap them. It seems a bit too scary. <laughs> that does. It but seems... you can poke holes in it because then the other thing the the fucking police do is go through all your social media find all your known contacts so then they start digging into them so if you use any of them for a ride or to shelter for the night or whatever they're going to track you down so really you just got to get all your cash out and fuck off bush i don't okay, think, but... yeah they wouldn't find it not for the fucking duration of the show anyway how long are they and then you... I, I can't remember actually it's been too long since i watched it it's like two weeks, four weeks, something like that. Oh, so you could go grab, you know, five hundred bucks here, and then I think that's about how much some they food get. and water and nick off to the the scrub and just be like chill. Yeah, buy a fishing yeah. pole. Hundred percent. Why don't people do that? <laughs> it seems so simple. It does. <laughs> but you got to you got to get to where you want to go somehow. Steal a car. Look, it's not really going to be an interesting <laughs> show if everyone just goes and sets up camp in the bush and the cops are just running around looking for them. Yeah, but isn't the idea of winning like a hundred grand or something? Yeah, it's a bit of money. Yeah, line. so well, who cares if it's a good show or not? You win a hundred K. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, there's probably some sort of clause in their contracts, but I'll trip up the cameraman and run. And just <laughs> yeah, lose your tail there as well. Up. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the camera, man. Trip, trip him up. Didn't say punch him up. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's the biggest fucking it's a red flag right there. Yeah, he's a liability. Like, surely he's got his phone on him. They want if they want to cheat, they can just like track him. Yeah, uh, they. You get you sit there, you get uh, allocated your cameraman, and it's just like some obese guy. You're like, <laughs> fuck, this guy can't run. You bum, fatty. I didn't mind that show. I've um, I've just started watching Million Dollar Island. Like that's fucking like yeah. In now, but I just started it last night and it seemed alright. It was a bit Lord of the Flies to start with. Like I've only watched one episode, right? So I don't know if it's shit long term. But basically, a hundred people land on an island. It's that dude from SAS as well, Ant Middleton. Is the host. Yeah, I've seen one as well, yeah. And, yeah, 100 people land on this island in Malaysia. Um, first thing they do is they have to pick, or well, everyone's got a number and a bracelet with 10 grand allocated to it. And then they spin this dial and it lands on someone's number and then that person is the one who has to pick six people to do a challenge. And if you win the challenge, you get the other five bracelets. So then you're worth 60 grand. 
and the other people are up for elimination. And the only way they can survive is if someone else wants to quit and they give them their bracelet. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. But you land on this island. So once they pick the first person, he's got to decide the six people to do the challenge the next day. Everyone just fucks off onto the beach. There's supplies on the beach and everyone is just jumping in like stealing stuff off each other, setting up camps at random. There's no signed like tribes or anything. Oh. There's like, I'm oh, saying, it's each to their own kind of thing. Yeah, this is like fucking shipwrecked, Lord of the Flies, fucking. It's so like Survivor, but. Solo. Got like a monetary value yeah. attached to. So then, like the first challenge, the, the first guy who got picked as like the, the leader or whatever for the day, he put himself in, in the challenge. And then, then it got revealed that, all right, so if you win, you get everyone else's bracelet. You're worth 60 grand now instead of 10. Um, the other five people, you're basically going home unless someone gives up their bracelet and decides to go home. So the first challenge was very survivorish sort of challenge. You got to run, grab a bag, jump into the water and grab this bag out of the air with some like blocks in it, swim to a buoy, grab another bag of blocks, fucking run up the beach, hold this platform in place while you stack stack these blocks up. And then they got to stay in place for like five seconds. And then you win if you're the first person. Okay. What I couldn't understand, if anyone's seen it, the first thing I would have fucking done because everyone's holding a rope in one hand and reaching for their blocks and stacking them because you got to hold this rope to keep the platform level that you're stacking on. I don't know why the fuck no one put the rope under their foot. Yeah. Yeah. Like straight away, get it to the right height, put the rope under your foot, then that's stable. Then you've got two hands to balance and create this. I could not yeah. for the life of me work out why no one did that. Oh, under pressure and time and you're panicking and you just go for what you think. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hooked for, for now. I, I I thought I'd seen it, but I haven't, obviously. Um, I'm going to have to check it out. Sounds like a neat concept. It's yeah. worth a go. So, like, the guy who won, so the, the first leader who got picked, he just picked all the big, strong dudes. And the oldest, like, fat dude, basically, was the one who won. He took three goes to get this bag, like, jump into the water and grab this bag. But he balanced first up and beat them all. So now he's got six bracelets. He's worth 60 grand. He's the richest man on the island. Yeah. And then one guy quit because he's like, I don't like this. I'm going home. He <laughs> gave his bracelet to some dude. And then four people went home, including the do- the guy who was the leader because he lost. Bloody hell. So uh-huh. now they picked another dude and he's got to decide who the six people to do the challenge is. And you can choose not to put yourself in. See, I like that because it's better than the conniving shit that goes on on lots of Survivor. Sort of, I don't know. I mean, yeah. They- in the in the um the fucking trailer for it, it's showing like oh, it's it shows the worst of human nature, but also the best, and it's blah 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 blah. Well, okay, here's one for you. Where do you think reality TV show is going to go next? When we're pretty much doing all reality shows, Squid Game, Hunger yeah. Games. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, so, yeah. Well, what is next, man? Is directly yeah. that where that, suddenly that's like, what we that said. It's not worth anything where the, where there's like it's too hard to survive you need to compete for money to survive therefore you are willing to put up your life so you reckon it'll get to that point uh I, no i don't know um i think i think one day it probably will whether it's in that sort of context or it's actually like you just have to survive that's a bit bleak. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's bound to eventually, regardless of it's our lifetime or not. It'll happen. Yeah. And then oh. the rest of the fucking world, Mars is getting colonised. <laughs> and these ships taking off from Earth. And we can't get a ticket because we're fucking the lower class. Mate, don't worry about Mars. Uh, don't even fucking send a submarine down to the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that, that, fucking, that sub was destined to fail. Yeah, it didn't seem like it was uh, <laughs> overly well engineered <laughs> when it was like, used in what an Xbox controller or some shit. I read an article. This the, one of the project managers or something of that project. He got fired because he brought up an issue that the front port window was only rated for fourteen hundred meters, where their depths were going for like three kilometers or two point four to three k's, and they didn't want to spend the extra money to upgrade that porthole and instead they fired the guy. Huh. Sounds like a classic. So, 
Yeah, well, that's just like, this one for you, the people that were on it. So if you're talking like that and something important's just been disregarded blatantly, like, and then you've got, f- what, four billionaires on the on the sub, all in sort of key leadership positions, do you think there could be any anything afoot? Like... Uh... No, because you're too isolated in that situation. Well, you're talking about the people that are in the sub. Yeah, like, I don't know, could one of them have been going against the WHO or something like that, and then they're like, oh, yeah, just come on this sub, and they've known that the sub's not up to standard, and they're going to... So you sacrifice the four others for that one person, so you get rid of him. Well, haven't you heard some of the stories about the missing Malaysian flight and things like that? Uh, what stories are these? Oh, well, just important people are been on there that they want to get rid of because they're causing a stir, and they've instead of just doing you know dealing with the one person, they've just sort of taken out the whole plane. I don't plane. know, real or not, man. But man, I, I, I don't know. I, I fucking I don't watch the news, let alone the conspiracy thing. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's been it's really dawned on me how much I just don't fucking watch the news anymore. Like I've had a gutful of it. And then someone mentioned the other day, oh, you hear about that sub. I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, yeah, it's been going on for days. Like, there's this submarine. I'm like, I haven't fucking got a clue what's going on. And then, of course, I investigated because I'm like, this sounds interesting. But the other thing that people are flapping around about at the moment is the fact that they knew, like, days in advance that the thing had fucking imploded. But the media was still going, oh, yeah, you know, they've got this much oxygen left. And, oh, like, the implosion is going to happen, but like they knew it had fucking imploded already. I do like all the the demonstrations of showing, um, like s- similar to submarine sort of vessels heading up a coke can, imploding and putting it in ice. And they're they're <laughs> like at three hundred and seventy five, whatever the measurement is, and they showed like this this thing imploding at one. Versus 375, and it fucking just crushes in on itself at one. I don't know what the fucking measurement is, sorry. But at 12,000 feet or whatever they are to see the Titanic, it's that measurement is 375. So that thing surely just went like a fucking pancake when it imploded. Yeah. Yeah, it's Wait. crazy to think about. The pressures down there are just huge. Mm. What a way to see the Titanic, though. <laughs> I bet you they did. <laughs> I do love the memes. It's funny how there's so many memes. Everyone's pulling the piss. Like, you know, you know, the ghost of the Titanic finally got some friends after a hundred odd years and all this sort of shit. Like there's some killer memes going on. I do wonder if people would be like poking fun at it this quickly if it wasn't a bunch of fucking billionaires down there. If it was just the common man and you know, it's a you know, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy to lose human life either way, but mm. I don't think people would have jumped on and made fun of it so quickly if it was, you know, some innocent poor people. <laughs> oh, I think I think people nah, would. I, people I would think be. they would, yeah, because yeah. they don't care about who's on it. Yeah. No, but, like, this is, like, mainstream people just jumping on and fucking bagging it, like, oh, you Oh, that, that's probably, yeah, that, that they would be different, probably. Yeah, yeah. there's always going to be someone that, you know, folks find straight away to be the first person, just you know, the person you say, oh, too soon, bro, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> when is an acceptable time frame to poke fun? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the audience, I guess. Fuck, I don't know. I mean, if you're a billionaire, this is a thing that seems a little bit sus. You're a billionaire. This thing, you'd think you'd look into this trip and how it's designed and you know whether it's certified and safe and all the rest of it you think or at least you'd have a staff member that would find all this stuff out for you and come back and be like yeah it's safe you're good to go but then (laughs) then again like um like who actually knew the actual truth behind it all if it wasn't up to spec yeah because if, if someone just fed you the information that you want to hear and they're confident about it. You're probably not going to question it. It's like you look at the one of its kind. I think I'm going to question it. 
Yeah, but you're not running your own inspection on it. No, nah, maybe it's, if you're a billionaire, maybe you're worth that. Yeah, much, that you would do that. Yeah, you'd think you would. But if you're going on holiday to Bali and they fucking put you on a rope swing, I mean, you buy you a car. Con- you're going to conduct no. a full like breakdown of the thing. Or you're just going to go fuck it. Yeah, no, a rope okay. swing's been tried and tested, man. Put it to like this: you're never buying the first generation of a new model car, right? You're always going to get the series two or three because they iron the kinks out of it. It's common sort of common dog fuck. So why wouldn't you sit there and be like, well, I ain't going to be the first one on that thing until it's had a few trips and I know it's good to go. Unless you're buying a 79, in which case you'll get five no. series. If by the time you actually get it, it'll be five series down the line anyway. Exactly. Not tested, mate. <laughs> Try it. Tested. Yeah, but everyone else, not you. Unbreak. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah, but then they fuck it, man, and they start making the four-cylinder one, which you described last week. <laughs> if you went on the sub before me, I'd be like, yeah, cool, it's good. I, I don't think well, sheep go on fucking it's good. submarines, man. <laughs> By the time you get your fucking 79, man, it'd be electric. Be <laughs> <laughs> <Probably>. hydrogen. <laughs> hey, at least I'll be going green, mate. It's like it's doing fucking, my part to save the planet. It's a Hover 79 series. <laughs> Tireless. Don't have to worry about running gear. Why don't we have shit that hovers yet? We do. Well, we kind of do. You know what I mean. I'm talking back to the future hoverboard style things. Look, we'd, well, we we'd have, have cars a- that run on water if it wasn't for oil companies making a fucking shit ton of money out of it, man. So now yeah. the conspiracy theory or... I don't think that's far-fetched, man. I just think that there's too much money being made by the petrochemical companies, the fucking corporations that run the fucking world. Oh, you know what we need to do? Is we need a a sole episode dedicated on a conspiracy theory. (laughs) We choose one each and then we fucking go through it. (laughs) That would be a good good one. Tin foil hats. Yeah. No. I'm just getting around more, I think, than us of late. It, has, it, it had been popping up in my feed, like especially over this sub thing, the whole conspiracy behind it. And I'm like, it's like a couple of days in. And I was like you, I was late to the party. I didn't know till a couple of days after it happened. But then my feed's just been, you know, slamming it. And then, yeah, just watching the, the conspiracy theories over it. I'm like, oh, you're all drawing a long bow here. But look, I kind of get it. Look, feed is the right word because it's just feeding you. The algorithm it is, is feeding you. It is. You've shown some interest. You've lingered. <laughs> now I've yeah. watched the whole video, not half. The algorithm yeah. hasn't followed. <laughs> yeah. It's just like with me and watch and fucking I watch some fucking horse shoes. Horse stuff, yeah. Now I get fucking peppered with the shit. I watched one rug clean. He's my fucking <laughs> rabbit hole. I watched this dude because it popped up in YouTube shorts. I think I've seen this one. The I've dude seen him. In the rugs, man. Right? And these rugs are fucking filthy. Like, I don't know how they get to that state. So he They're runs, like black. Yeah. Like, yeah. Black. So he runs over it with this, you know, fucking the pressure washer, the shampooing thing, the like this brushing machine. Turns it over, does the same process again, and then runs it all. And like, he, he sort of sets it up as a bit of an ASMR. He doesn't commentate it or anything. It's just the sound of him cleaning this rug, and you watch all this dirt and shit come out of it. There's something gratifying about it. Satisfying, like 20, yeah. 20 minutes long. <laughs> and I'm like, I've just watched 20 minutes of a dude fucking cleaning a rug. I've watched like two or three in a row. Like, Same. I don't know why. Same. So you're I fucking with my algorithm, I reckon. I reckon it knows. No, you no, know you me. fucked with mine. But um, you find like the fucking the worst looking one or something like that ended up being the coolest looking to find out how bad it did look. But yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Where most people will actually give up on it. He's still very boring people, man. He watching fucking videos of cleaning rugs. Oh, at least whatever. It's like, reality. At least it's a real rug with a real outcome, not just a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> with an unknown outcome. <laughs> now they do a good job. Some the one I watch is some dude in the UK, something mountain rug cleaning. I don't know. He gets like frozen rugs, like he, re- he gets some out of the dump and then fucking does them up and gives them away or sells them or whatever. But I just don't know how anyone can have a rug that is just coated in mud. 
Mm. Rugs Do you have a rug there. in your house? I have two rugs in the house. There you go. I'm pretty sure if we pulled them out, they're not going to look like they were new. You haven't seen no, them? No, but, but these are like, like – Yeah, these are fucked, bro. They're Mom's like they've been like sitting like outside. It's rained and it's just like mud all over it and sat there for 12 months. It's like if you put your rug on your back porch and wiped your foot on it, feet even, every day, and it got rained on, shat on by animals. Just, yeah, it's filthy. No, I get what you mean, but I think you'd be surprised how much dirt and filth come out of your rug if you took it out and pressure washed it. Probably. Yeah. Look, I've, got, I've no, had some puppies in the last two years, so I'm sure there's fucking plenty of piss and shit <laughs> and rain down in the fibres. I just don't think you're understanding the volume of just... I'll show you a video. It's fucked. It's, it's gross. Well, what if they picked it up at the thrift shop? Well, I think he's... No, asked, they, the thrift shop wouldn't accept it. It's like they're that bad. <laughs> Some of them, like, people have just given it to him to clean. Others, he's, like, found at the dump, and it's an expensive rug, so he cleans it and then sells it or gives it away to, like, a dog shelter or whatever. It's kind of clever. Hmm. Get a but, Persian rug and clean it up and sell it for another 400 bucks. I mean, after I watched the first one, I was like, what are these rugs worth? Because surely his services are at least a couple hundred. But Yeah, I reckon. The hours he's putting into them, the rug would have to be worth at least a grand to justify... All that shit. But even if he sells it for a grand, takes his two to three hundred for his time, he'd probably pay himself out of it, but then the profit would go to charity or whatever. Maybe. It's still better than nothing. And that's YouTube as well. Therefore, that's money. I guess so. I mean, that's the other one. Oh, fuck. The other I don't thing, like the guy. The, the a, guy? Yeah. Fucking hell, we're on the same thing. I think, um, fucking he own. goes... We're both watching our own Senate mate YouTube. That's the problem. I'll just, um, I'll just give you both the room. Do you want me to dim the lights on my way out? He, he goes, Josh, Josh, Josh. No, that's all right. Settle down, man. <laughs> um, you just want to go message, cut. <laughs> nah. Um, but anyway, so he, he goes around to a house and it's generally a run down looking house. And he goes, I'll do your lawn for free. He goes, one time only, I'll do it for free. And he records it and fucking posts it for people to, I guess, watch. Which part of me is like, why would people watch this? And the other part of me is like, you have watched it. So, yeah. um, and then he offered to pay this guy to do it as well. He's like, 200 bucks, I'll do it for you. Okay. Paying the owner to do he, his lawn. He must be getting some ad revenue then, that guy. He must be. I watched a guy called, well, the last two nights, I've watched a guy called SB Mowing over in the States. And he just finds abandoned, like, derelict houses over there because the city get a bit shitty if things get overgrown and the neighbours are like, eh. Um, so he just finds these places and then cracks in. And he'd spend maybe, I don't know, three hours. He does everything, like, all the edging, like, overgrown, like, fucking foot and a half, two feet high grass, trims hedges, all, the, all of that. Mm. And then I'm looking at his video, I'm like, fucking 12 million views from, like, a week ago. Yeah. That probably justifies spending three hours fucking tidying up someone's. Easy. Surely it would. Yeah, you'd be making a couple grand off of YouTube on that. Yeah. Just, what are we doing? That should be a thing. Nice lawns, just... motherfucker. <laughs> I'd do that. I'd fucking mow lawns. I enjoy mowing lawns. But then it'd be good to do it, like, to do it for free for people. So you're helping the community while getting paid well. True. And if you go through, it's good, very good oh, I watch his comments. He's got like you can see people's donations as well. Somehow yeah, it's yeah. Can link to some donation thing for a charity to to his account. No, for him and come up with like fifty bucks, forty bucks. Where well, so he's sexualized mowing. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> how do you, how do you go there straight away? His what? perverted lawn. He's just this fucking weedy little yank. He just likes. Mike's cutting your, uh, his, your grass, Josh. <laughs> That's all. That's all it is. Oh, I don't have any can, grass, There's plenty mate. of ways to make a buck these days. Unfortunately, a lot of it just involves getting your kid off. We no, it. that's not what I meant about... He, you said he sexualised it. Yeah, I'm thinking like OnlyFans, dudes giving money just for, I don't know, some cooter shots or something like that on lawn. No. Um, same sort of thing. So He's just giving you lawn porn for cash. So if you get it, so that's the same sort of thing as like tipping someone at a store. 
Not that we tip here, but it's, you could you could tip. Never it's tip. the same thing. Never tip, so I wouldn't know. Yeah, of course you wouldn't. <laughs> no, nah, neither neither am I. Even <laughs> getting like a beer out of you is like drawing blood from a stone. No, nah, actually, I tipped it once for an Uber. You tipped an Uber. I tipped you an Uber. Fucking risty from the fucking driver's seat. <laughs> Why is everything risky? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. I, I think it was it was just quick and fucking. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. Up. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaned up your mess for you. Exactly. It's back roads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not gonna do it in the middle of the street. <laughs> well, no, talk fair. about cabbies yeah. actually. When I had to get a taxi back from um talking about what? Cabbies. Cabbies. Okay. I thought you said when cabbage. I, when I got a taxi back from the uh station I was on in Perth. Um so I'd real I'd organise this this cab uh the day prior. Okay. Anyway the fake taxi. Pre booked. Yeah, yeah, pre pre booked. So a real one or a fake one? Fake taxi? A real fucking taxi man. <laughs> so I've set my alarm for like half an hour before he he's supposed to rock up just so I can go have a shower and grab my bags and things. My alarm goes off and then suddenly I get a, a phone call. I'm like, cool. I answer it. He's like, Hey, this is your taxi. I'm just gonna be half an hour late. I'm like, I'll be your pardon, I've got to get to the airport. <laughs> now I'd pre Emptied this and it allowed some fudge factor in my flight times anyway. Yeah. But I'm like, was a cabbie, you saw the cab's name, it's like Mr. <laughs> Bates, and you're like, well, no. give him a bit of extra time. No, so I've, I've, I've sort of like gone, I was a bit upset and said, oh, well, this is an acceptable man. Like, you know, I've got a flight to catch. I need to get to the airport. He's like, I'll be there in, in 30 minutes. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. So he, he rocks up 30 minutes late, wait for it, wait for it. We get out the, the off the property, so we're just off the property and just turned onto one of the dirt roads to get onto the bitumen. And he's turned around and he's like pointed at the screen in the middle of the car. I'm like, what are you, what are you pointing at? Like, it's radio. not taking over, is it? Well, no, no, no. He's just pointing at it. And then I realised that there's the fuel consumption display and how much, like, how many k's he's got before an empty on the centre console, so you can see it. And there's like four k's left. What a fuckhead. And he's like, oh, I've, I've just got to go get fuel. I'll, I'll just stop in and go get fuel on the way to the airport. I'm like, bro, you're half an hour late and you've got to go get fuel. And then I've got to make my fucking flight. Are you serious? Like, how far are you from Perth at <laughs> like this point? An hour. An, an hour from an Perth. An hour. All right. So I can sort of get that in that there's probably not that many cabs out in the fucking Whoop No, no. He was a local cabbie from Serpentine. Yeah, so I was yeah, like, "It's a bit okay, weird." Okay, I don't, I don't get this. Okay, whatever. And it's a big fare. It's like a hundred, hundred and forty odd bucks for the hour draw. A big fare. Anyway, he felt bad because I sort of didn't want to talk. I was a bit frustrated at this stage because I'd allowed a bit of, bit of a fudge factor for sort of something to go how, wrong. But not, how annoying not, is it when someone's late, Josh? Not the fuel. No, I'm always where I need to be at the moment. I'm supposed to be there. Thank you. Um, Eventually. So it was it, like it, it was just like a bit more frustrating than he had to stop for fuel. And I think he could tell that I was feeling a little bit pissed off because he had to get fuel as well. Like I could have got over the fact that he was half an hour late. But anyway, so he's pulled into this service station and he's like, oh, I'll get you a drink. <laughs> so he's going to buy me a drink. <laughs> for him making me late. I'm like, okay. I said no, I didn't want anything at that stage because I was just too concentrated on <laughs> All right, So you used a slight accent there. Was he Indian or was he Aussie? No, he was not Australian. Well he's he's Australian, yes. He's he's a he's, a, he's now Australian. Not originally from Australia. Just thank you. Just paint yeah. a picture for me. Like I'm trying to like there might be some fucking cultural disconnect here or whatever. Like I just need to get a proper picture of Oh, there was something that was a disconnect. Was he a brown man? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah. Not for any other reason. I just want to get a full picture of what's going on. Yeah. Did you was, make your flight? Stereotypical Indian. Yes. Okay. Did you make your flight on time? Yes. Yeah. I I I hand it to him, man. He drove like the fucking wind bulls. I. Fuck. He made it in that time, and I was like, holy shit. 
Yeah, well, I think he, I think he owed you one. I watched the speed out a few times. I'm like, yeah, he's he's fucking, he's pushing it here. He's pushing the boundaries, just like this yeah. light. He's got no room, which has decided to die again. Gosh, go play with the court. <laughs> <laughs> we need to we need to update this light. We do need to upgrade it. Um, well, I don't need to because fucking I'm in Bris all the time. But yeah, you guys do. True. Yeah, like this is two weeks in a row. This thing's just died mid podcast. So. It's got like a dodgy connection. I might have to take it apart. <sighs> yeah. Stop knocking it when I'm doing my OnlyFans porn shoots. It's wet. That's the problem. It's supposed to be to light you from a distance, not like around. <laughs> hey, put a ring light for a, for a reason, mate. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Uh, I think uh, Josh, Josh is going to leave us for a piss set for a minute anyway, and he's going to take his phone. Okay, <laughs> no, that's we can, yes. no, we can send messages on his phone. Oh, 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 he's you... like bastard. Damn it. I can't unlock his phone either because it's thumbprint, I think. Thumbprint or face? Uh, One of the two. Uh, both. Both, thing, both are things that I would not do to my own phone just so the government don't have my fingerprint, my retina, and my fucking. I'm actually surprised that he has that on his phone. You no, know, given his fucking tinfoil hat, we should we should call this segment while Josh was peeing. <laughs> just make it a, a weekly. A week. That should be just yeah, yeah, that's a weekly thing. <laughs> weekly thing. What happened? We need Josh a whole intro. We need a whole introduction thing with it as well, and then he doesn't know about it because <laughs> <laughs> I just I just fucking hit a sting every time he goes out of the room. Yeah, just peeing. <laughs> Oh dear! I love it. Just fucking oh, man. circling back, actually, to like making money, OnlyFans, and all that sort of shit. I was listening to Alpha Blokes today. There's another good mm. podcast, and oh, yeah. I had I had Renee Gracie on, who is former V8 supercar driver, and like you know, she didn't have an amazing career other than the fact she was a woman trying to make it in the man's world. So she sort of like laid out her story of coming up through go karts and whatever, and. Um, got to the OnlyFans part. And so while she was driving V8 supercars, her manager took all her social media off her. So she only had like 30,000 people following. Like partway through that, she got her, she got her phone back, started posting as herself, and her following grew to like 50,000, 60,000 people. And then around that time, she jumped on OnlyFans and started that up. The mm. first night she launched it, in the morning she had twenty four grand US in her account. I think I've heard whispers about this, but that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was a story back when she started, I think, like, just pre-COVID. Yeah. But fucking hell. And then she, like, rang her dad and was like, oh, dad, fucking, because her dad's an accountant. So, she, like, from the yeah. business side of things, he helped her out and whatever. Yeah. Dad, I'm starting an OnlyFans account. He's like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> she had, like, 80 grand in a week. Seven days. 80 grand US. You wouldn't, like, I could, you could see why they don't work. Like, that's, that is beyond work. Fuck me, the lights died again. I'm in the dark. Yeah. But like she said her best month is 500 grand. And she pretty much spends That's a crazy. week shooting shit and then fucks off. And now she just travels to different locations, meeting up with friends. Like we're oh, four, year, four years friends. in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Girlfriends. Fucking yeah. People to shoot content with. But yeah, man, like half a mil in a month. That's nuts. I mean, yeah, you got to pay for like traveling around the world and pay for your cosmetic surgery. Like she's had everything done. Yeah, it's not, it's not my deal. Like everything's fake. But no, nah, that sort of ruins everything. To be honest, it does. Um, light monitor, could you please adjust the light again? Josh is back from urinating and trying to put. Oi, there we go. That's the lights on. We'll fix this light. Maybe we should get people to donate money. Could you donate money and we can buy a proper fucking light? <laughs> Somebody. Just tip us a little bit. You know. Tip us some. Now <laughs> we sound like cam girls. <laughs> Tips for tits. Would you get the tip out for cash, Josh? <sighs> nah. Nah. No man of money on this earth. No cock not, for, not for public. No cock for cash. Nah. If, no, for Josh, the tip is the whole thing. So... <laughs> 
It is. It is. A full reveal. <laughs> it is. No, it's not happening. Just a zip. No, especially at the moment. <laughs> Oh man! Do you want to want to elaborate on that, Josh, or what? Do you want to elaborate? No, no. <laughs> what is going on? Just fucking put that. Oh, yeah. what is with all what is with all rings playing up these days? <laughs> yeah, Josh <laughs> ring. and this fucking ring. Light. Just chuck the main light on, man. Oh, fuck this. Oh no, he's gonna fix it probably again. <sighs> again, it's lasted about two minutes each time. True. We. Sorry if you've got epilepsy and you're watching this. Yeah, that's just it's like an epilepsy warning right now. Christ. <laughs> it's hurting my eyes. Are you so, intentionally doing this, Josh? You can't of, hear me, but... Pull the court to one side. This is the downfall of uh, live on YouTube. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Right this is the downfall of non-edited podcasts either. Hurry, but... You know, the listeners and the viewers can just ride the waves of emotion and Josh putting his headphones on and off right next to the microphone and making that sound. And, I didn't hear it, it's fine. Oh, there's feedback squeal. But, yeah, things fuck up live. Yeah, they do. This is why I'm not for them. Are you right? Yeah, I'm good. You look, like, slightly in pain. <sighs> Nothing that old Jim can't fix. Yeah, but it's sugar-free, bro. Mate, it's because I'm a healthy bloke. Fuck that. I am a, a full fucking bourbon, the bourbon of strength, 8%, full sugar. Bring it on. Is there any more beans in the fridge? No, that's not here. I've, here I've got coffee. We should have a lot of clarity to your discussion tonight, Catchy. Yes. Yeah, no. I, I think I need a few drinks. It helps. The old. Uh, it doesn't help to play ping pong, apparently. Beer pong. It wasn't. Oh, what? It wasn't ping pong. Thailand, what? <laughs> so on the on, fucking on the weekend. Uh so I, mate, we work Saturdays as well. So half day Saturday, went to the pub, had a few drinks, played a game pool, a few, unbeaten. So um and then we're like, <laughs> do we do we go on tonight and head to one of the guys' house to just have a few drinks, play some beer pong and just a few drinking games on a lap, and we end up doing it. I've never played beer pong before because I'd only never really drank beer before and everyone drank beer. So it's like, I'm not drinking beer. So I avoided it. Um, anyway, I thought I'd crack into it. And the guy I played with, um, he was drinking Bundy. Bundy Reds. I do. Which was a, which is a bad, bad idea because uh, he just cleaned me up. Uh, I didn't get a cup. And he, like, Got all mine. So that was a quick a game. Cup. I didn't get an A cup. I'm, I, I was surprised how bad I was at beer pong. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. That's terrible, man. How many, is for you. How many cups? Uh, six. So just three, two, and one? Yeah, three, two, one. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. That's abnormal for you because you're quite good with balls. <laughs> I sort of, I sort of remind you that I'm undefeated in an uh, eight ball up here so far. Yeah, but no one, no one cares about, about, about defeated no in about, beer pong. No one cares about eight ball. Yeah. Like <laughs> beer pong, bro. Beer pong. I, I need to. We need. We need to play it. So I need to practice. I'll fucking destroy both of you. But I'm we'll, not fucking twelve. I'm not playing uh, beer pong. It's mate. fun, motherfucker. No, it's not. <laughs> it is fun. Was it fun the next day, Shannon? Ah, it was still a good night. But yeah, I had a hangover. Fucking Sunday, which kind of sucked. Have you played Rage Cage? No. That's the next one. What's Rage Cage? So Rage Cage, you have everyone around the table, you have two balls going, and you have to bounce the ball into your cup. And then once the ball goes into your cup, you fucking pass to the next person along. So all I'm getting is your cups here and your side. Yes. Yep. So, yes. So then you fucking stack uh, your but the next person. The kicker is, yeah. They but go on. What? Yeah, yeah. No. You stack your cup into the next to the next person, and then they've got to bounce it into theirs. And if you get it in first go, you can put the cup wherever you want. So if uh, basically what you want to do is get yours into your cup before the person to your left gets theirs in. And then you stack your cup on theirs and they have to drink. Because there's two balls going, 
if someone gets it in the first go, they can put their cup right behind you or the person next to you or wherever they want it. So you can just basically gang up on someone and they just have to constantly drink if they can't get a bottle of cup quick. And it just goes around and around and around the table. Probably fucking up the explanation of that. Yeah, basic- it just seems it sounds messy and just too intricate. Doesn't sound intricate, but it just sounds like it would get messy as fuck. So you're just passing your beer off to the left every time, pretty much. No, no, no. So all the beers are in the middle. Sorry, okay. I didn't explain that. All no. there's like multiple beers and cups in the middle. Two cups, two balls. I start here, so you're to my left. I bounce the ball into the cup. As soon as I've done that, I pass it to you. All right. And the other person is chasing around the table. Mm-hmm. So if they get it first go into the cup, they can give it straight to me while you're trying to get the ball in. And if I get it in, I can stack my cup on top of yours, then you have to drink. I remember the good old days where you just drink piss and get fucking written off. Because it's fun, man. It, get, it gets like hectic. And then you get end up with this, like, and once you've drunk, you put that cup in there. So oh, you know, yeah, the stack of yeah. gets higher. And you're trying to bounce this ping pong ball into this stack of cups. Oh, okay, that makes it somewhat yeah, yeah, yeah. harder. Yeah, yeah okay. the stack gets higher. Yeah. It's fun, man. I think we should do that on the weekend. It's something to, oh, I don't really work with three people. But it'd be fun. It's it's good to have mixed skill level. Yeah. Mixed genders. <laughs> Diversity. Diversity. A mm-hmm. mix mixture of drinks. And then there's always mm-hmm. the shitty cup in the middle, which is a mixture of everything. Someone ends up having to drink this dirty mix of like. It's kind of like King's Cup, how they have a mixture of, yeah. 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 Just, I mean, it's still called the King's Cup. Yeah. I don't know about you, but the older I get, the more fearful I get of hangovers. So it's like I just try to avoid them these days. Just, just have a fucking tolerance for alcohol and you don't get them, bro. Except for the other weekend. Holy shit. Don't know how I got up for hunting the next day. <laughs> I think I hunt better with a hangover, to be honest. No, I'll <laughs> fuck that. Because you're slower. <laughs> well, sometimes slow is good. Yeah, but yeah. Don't but hungover is not good. No, as long not- as like, you get rid of the headache pretty quick, then a hangover is not too bad. Yeah, but that's what kills me with a hangover. It's no fun trotting around feeling like shit, but... No. Getting a big buck. I don't know how you do it as a parent, to be honest, man. Like, have a big night and then have to deal with twins the next day. Yeah. I let me sleep in now. <laughs> but not for the first how many years back in the life. day when they were up at like six o'clock fuck that that was not fun you were well from what it seems from an outside point of view you had more big weekends back then than you do now oh. uh, i think i probably had more big weekends pre-divorce <laughs> and then i <laughs> got up and looked after yeah that's what i mean like, children. like i was still married up until there were two so I had a lot of big, especially when you fucking split up with your missus back then. There was a few. Oh, weeks, you went. There was yeah, a few weekends in a row where we were written off weekends in a row. <laughs> and my missus was filthy at the time, but I would still get up and look after the kids the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Like yeah. you find a way. You just, you just do. You fucking power through. But then, then I didn't really have big weekends when I did split up and I had them on my weekends because it was my weekend to spend with them. So I never really fucking had big nights on the Terps. Yeah, you always got the next weekend, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get you. So, I mean, I'll have a few beers now, but the thing is, if I'm getting up the next day, like they'll, they like it. They've reached an age, they're seven, they've reached an age where they like to sleep in. They don't like to get up now. I'm like, <laughs> thank fuck. I was waiting for this. Except when I have to get up for school, then it's a fucking just yeah. nightmare. Because now they don't want to get up for school. Whereas once upon a time, they'd be up at like six o'clock. Hey, Dad. Cool. You dressed for school? Yep. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now it's like, Dad, I don't want to get up. It's cold. Just fucking do it. It is way harder in winter to get up. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. It's probably a winter thing, but it's also an age thing. Like they like their sleep now. But yeah, they let me sleep in on weekends too, which is nice. It's good that they can just get up, make themselves breakfast, do whatever. They don't need me to do everything. So like, I'll get a sleep in. 
So nine, nine yeah. o'clock's a massive sleep in for me. Thanks. Thanks, girls. If you ever listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it. And it's on YouTube land, so that's how they'll, they'll, they'll find out. Yeah, they will. Mm. I showed the friends this on well, not this, but YouTube the other day, like because uh, I assume they have laptops or whatever at school. Or I don't know. I went and picked them up the other day and like my daughter's standing in the fucking schoolyard with her friend and he's got his phone out and they're looking at YouTube. I'm like, fucking what the hell? Anyway. How old are they? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm like, what Fast. the fuck is this little kid got a fucking phone and he's seven? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I reckon they should have phones of that age. Fuck but no. they should be a basic phone that you can only call on. Correct. Like not text yeah. worth the net. For safety, phones are a great thing, especially for children. But and it beats trying to do the old dodgy. I don't know if you had them. Yeah, you, reverse call. No, you, before that, you used to flatten out a straw and you put in the coin return on the left side, and you could like press this lever in and you press your button, um, and it would just it would call. So it, it was acting like a, I guess the machine was taking money by by putting this straw into the little slot. And you could do it, man. I, I did it. You had a public payphone hack. What the hell? I did it at <laughs> school all the freaking time, man. It wasn't like a Telstra one, although I think you can do them with Telstra, but it was like the, you know, the little ones that you get at pubs back in the day that were just mm. like, yeah, yeah, yay, yay big. Yeah. You still had the coin slot and everything. They were like that at the school that I went to. So you just and like it worked, man. You put a straw street. with a coin attached to it, you know? We just, we yeah, I've, I've heard this. Yeah, the string and coin I've heard. Mm. The straw straw would work because we used to nick the straws from the canteen at lunch. And then, yeah, and my mum was always late picking us up. So, yeah, you are always you learn early. trying to yeah. try and call mum. And obviously we didn't have any money, so you drive that. <laughs> and then the reverse call thing came in, like 1-800 reverse. and But it gave you a window to tell the person that was receiving the call your name. And if they wanted to accept, accept the it. charges, yeah. But like in that time, you'd be like, "Hey, mum, where are you? Come pick us up," and then hang up the phone, so they didn't have to receive the charges. <laughs> yeah, kids these days will never know about the fucking carry on that we had to go oh, back okay. in the day. Yeah. Let alone yeah. the time before public phones and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but yeah, it was anyway, a different world back then. Yeah, my kids don't need a phone because they're never left anywhere where they need a phone to be able to contact school well their fucking mum is a teacher at the school they go to so yeah that's a good point yeah okay so they don't need anything in that regard yet. yet none like i don't think there's many kids with phones at seven one of my daughter's best friend has a phone and i don't fucking like it you don't okay. like her or the phone it don't like it the phone not her it <laughs> oh, just clarifying you don't like the situation. Right, not, that, not that she thinks she needs a phone, but I'll just, I don't like the influence. Look, if they come up with kids' phones, like a Nokia 3310, but without text and no games, so it was just calls, I'd definitely do it. Anyway, the point I was getting to then is my daughter was telling me that she got her friends at school to Google Centre Mate Podcast. <laughs> And they're all looking at it on YouTube. Probably not a wise and I'm like, choice. Jesus, this is not good. <laughs> G- give us some stickers. Nah, she just wanted to be like, "Hey, everyone, my dad's on YouTube." Not that that's a big deal at all, because anyone can be on YouTube. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's still her, a big deal as a kid. Yeah, because she's seven. It's a big deal. So she she, she should start doing her own un- unboxings of Barbies. Yeah, isn't there some fucking kid who just like yeah just millions like, man like, squillions. Like, it just yeah, opens toys. Like it's a good toy lock. companies. Toy companies send him toys to open up in his videos. Wasn't he? Didn't he? Like earn a million or something in a year? Like yeah, no, like less, man. Like he millions. He's like rich. Yeah, fucking well, his man. parents are rich because technically it's his parents' account. <sighs> well, at the time he was only like fucking twelve. All right, if if this was your kid. And you were the parent. Would you take a commission of his, hundred percent of his earnings? Be That's like, what, Spielman, we're I'm, doing I the. Mean, surely he can't get the money because he's not eighteen. So it would have to go to his guardians. Yeah, but such time into an account that they're going to hold. But would you take a commission? 
Fucking nice. I would be. I'd be like, son, I'm the tax man. My bank account. Thirty three percent. Oh, these days a kid probably could sue it. Like you probably couldn't get away with it these days. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got to afford a good lawyer. Like you're screwed. Hang on. I was thinking about something today that was. Let's take all his money. I won't, I won't go into the exact specifics, but a person that was an adult that's say twenty eight years old went to try and get a uh, hysterectomy, okay, because they didn't want kids. They didn't, you know, they just were like, no, nah, no, nah, don't want children, all the rest of it. Doctor refused because of their age and said, well, you know, in a few years' time you might want to have kids and it's not reversible. And they come back with, okay, but a four-year-old <laughs> can transition. As a yeah, good point. As to transition. I don't know why I just thought of this, but, yeah. Well, that's a fair point. Yeah. That's a very good point. Well, it is a val- valid point, to be honest. An adult couldn't make an adult decision, but a child's allowed to make an adult decision. It's triggering something in my mind. What the fuck is that noise? What noise? There's a strange noise coming from my house. I don't know what the fuck it is. I think it's my two dogs having to go at each other. Sounds like- Something's yeah. choking the chicken. It's not in that sense either. It was either two dogs going at it, which my dogs will make a weird noise at each other when they sort of play fight, or it sounded like a child. It's the dogs. Do I have any more Jim in the fridge? I'm telling you, you left one here last week. That is that one. I thought I left two. Would you like an eight percent fucking yeah, let's do it. bearded lady? Let's do it. The sugar in it, Josh. I'll trade you more. Mount Franklin for a bearded sparkling water. This is a fucking carry on, by the way, because the yeah. popularity of fucking sparkling water in cans is shitting me to tears. My missus is getting around it. Like, there's this new one that Coles do called Bubbly or Buble or fucking whatever the hell it is. Various flavors, tastes like shit, but just cans. I mean, it's good that my 10 cent fucking can collection is going through the roof. Why, why is that so like, bad? But, I'm not like, just fucking drink water. But it's sparkling and slightly flavoured. Out the goddamn tap. We've got a fucking pure tap. Just drink water. Why what does it have to be sparkling? What about oh, it? Yeah, I don't get the I don't get the sparkling water. It's never done me sort of any good. Like I can't fathom it. You drink Coke, it's just like drinking water but it's different. carbonated. You drink no. Coke because you're having a pizza or you want a fucking sugar high. What's the point of drinking lightly sparkling, sugar free, raspberry flavoured water? To keep healthy. And it's just a substitute of Coke. Drink fucking water. Ooh, oh, you are drinking water. Anyway, it's a Karen because I also own a fucking... What are those things that fucking carbonate water? Uh, soda streams. Soda streams. Yeah, that's the one. We also have one of those in the possession. Yeah, See, now they're good. Soda stream, yeah. Rip that bad boy. Then you just got normal water with some bubbles in it. I can, I can sort of understand that. There you go. No, you do flavoured water. Like you flavour your water for your soda stream. Yeah, chuck some lemon in yeah. it or fucking buy some flavouring yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Here's one for you. Growing up, doing the spark of the fireworks, but doing one of those with a soda stream. With the, with the uh, canister thing? Yeah. Are you avoiding the B word? Yes. Very good. It's probably a good thing on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. See, I've done, I've done them with uh, like a deodorant can. Yeah. That works all right. Would you call it an incendiary device? No, I'm not calling it a thing. You call it a uh, shits and gigs kind of device? I'd call it nine-year-old fireworks. Okay. Here's something else kids these days will never fucking get around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Grinding down sparklers into Coke bottle caps to make <laughs> fairy dust. <laughs> to make, uh, you don't say it. You man. can't say the B word <laughs> or the E. Yeah, okay. Are they doing that? that? Make Wait. sparkle bangers. We'll call them sparkle bangs. Sparkle you, bangers. You can't. But fireworks periods out yeah, the window now, and that was one of the best times I had as a kid. Was messing around with fireworks. Granted, doing it 
unsupervised for the first few times. Probably not smart. But uh, I don't think I've ever played with fireworks, to be honest. That's really dark. Yeah. No, none of the little fucking rockets that are like, no. No. Little 204. They they used to have these things that were like 204 and they just had a match head striker. They could just strike it on a on a matchbox and then throw it, and they were waterproof. Oh, well, not waterproof, but you could throw them in water and they'd still go off. And yeah, they waterproof, were absolutely wicked. Bloody hell! Yeah, because I've ever played with fireworks. A mate of mine I went to uni with, he just about burnt down like this area of scrub behind the houses <laughs> where he used to live. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like it's all way familiar. Oh, he, exactly. him and a mate of his decided to go down, like, because he's fucking, it's like middle of suburbia, but there's a patch of fucking scrub on the sides of these hills. And um, yeah, him and a mate went down there and let off a firework. And of course, it just went up and came straight back down and then fucking lit it, all this dry grass on fire. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's not a good idea. In, yeah, that's pretty shit. In Australia, actually, in our summers. Maybe they should just ban it in summers. And then once the rains have hit, and had a good soaking, yeah. Open what, it up during right? five, like out of five band season, go for your life. I reckon. What's the harm? Yeah, but I did that as a kid. So on a forty degree day, and I learned the hard way, man. Well, yeah, <laughs> like almost lost my parents' house, my neighbour's house, um, and that that was over. Yeah, just being silly. No, I didn't quite understand that. Okay, it's like forty degrees and everything's yellow and dry as fuck you know true but i learned i certainly learned i didn't actually mess with any any like fireworks or anything actually after that until i was an adult well into my 20s then i messed around again <laughs> but safely i mean i can't understand why i've had to prevent you fucking lighting fires in bushland in no nah, fire is different mate <laughs> fucking camp fire is fire because nah, 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 there's no bang you're not getting any any hot embers fucking squirting out like fucking a hundred meters away or yeah you know you you're, you're you're the guy that'll throw a like a bullet into the barrel into the barrel what i'm gonna throw yeah, into the barrel of fire pit you'd be like <laughs> just like yep <laughs> you always get that one person that throws like fucking a deodorant can or something in the fire when no one's looking yeah and you're sitting around the fire, and they're just like, oh. throw it in and walk off. Yeah, but you and just see, observe. With like a deodorant can or like a uh, can of baked beans, um, that's a good one. No, no. Close. You can sort of predict those and go, okay, well, they're going to they're gonna go off and they're going to make it a little bit of noise and not a mess, but, you know, be sort of like predictable somewhat. But the Coke, have you ever done a Coke bottle up with the air in it and thrown mm -hmm. it on and then it's gone up? And it's sort of like because of the pressure, it just sort of spits stuff everywhere. I find that hard because sometimes they'll go off or they'll make a bang or they'll, you know, spit and everywhere. They'll fizzle. The yeah. Um, yeah. And you sort of, so you don't know. You're like, oh, what's going to happen? With like a like a round happening in the floor, you know what, exactly what's going to happen and you can expect it um, sort of thing. Oh, no, that's, that's more thought, thought on it. You just sound like a pyromaniac to them. Well, when I was young. <laughs> And I was working up in um, the York Peninsula. We used to feel <laughs> this is fucking actually really stupid, but we used to fill balloons up with oxycetylene, <laughs> and then just like when people were sitting around the campfire, I just float them on over to the fire. And, Whoa! <laughs> that was silly. that was very very silly. I'd highly recommend be, doing that. It'd be but funny it, as fuck. It's good good for a laugh. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> oh, it's, it's pretty bad. That's it? stupid, bro. <laughs> that was, it, yeah, it was pretty bad. But I mean, it, there was no worse than tipping fucking petrol on on a, you know, trying to light a fire with just straight petrol. There's heaps of videos getting around today with people trying to pour petrol on fires, and people don't realise that the fumes go up. Mm. You know, I learned that, that the hard way. Oh yeah, <laughs> see, there's no difference between that and a balloon full of oxy, um, you know, over petrol. Oh, they're just both as dangerous. Mm. But yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I'll only ever use like either a mix or just straight diesel now. This is hard to get going. A bit of a mix is good, but I don't. Or just learn how to start a fire. Yeah, correct. Like, like. Wait, don't cheat. Fucking light it. Oh no! If you're like, you know, having a proper fire, not like these girly little pissy fucking fires. You're having a proper fire. You gotta, you gotta put something on it. Right. If you've got like pallets and a massive stack of shit already, then trees or whatever. Yeah, I could. Yeah, bon- bonfire is a different story, mate. Then you just want to get it up, get it going. Yeah, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> well done, well played. I'll pay that. <laughs> but no. well, talking about all right, here's, come here, on, get up. Here's a good one. Talking get, about get this, like having your fires, starting your fires, yeah. and a bit of creature comfort while you're out bush or having your your bonfire or whatever. What do you like to do now as an adult to make your life more comfortable when you're out camping? Well, that's actually a very good segue, Josh. Thank you. Yeah, that was. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought you were going with the segue, and then I thought you weren't uh, there for a second, then you went back into it. Yeah. We're just going to call it for what it was. That was a good segue, Josh, because we actually do want to talk about camping versus glamping tonight. Mm-hmm. Now that we've waffled on for an hour and 20. But yeah, we want to we want to discuss these things. So, what do we like to have these days? So you've got camping, roughing it, glamping it. Yeah, you've got some more creature comforts. But I feel like now that we're getting older, we like a few more creature comforts. So, correct. Think, some things I want to talk about is your setup for different situations. Your favourite setup for camping. These are all things we'll get to, but I want to talk about your, your fucking, you're going away, you got your missus, you're going away, you're doing the Great Ocean Road, you stay, you're just camping, right? <clears throat> Camper trailer, fucking caravan, rooftop tent, swag, what's the best way to do it? Would you do one, would you, do, would you not do the other? So different setups, what's, what, what would you say is glamping versus camping these days for us? Glamping would have to be something that's like your mobile home kind of like bus style thing, I reckon. Would be glamping, sort of like your all your creature comforts that you have at home with you. A caravan, I guess, would probably have the similar aspect of that as well. It's like a but different when... level of, of it though. It's like not quite glamping. Yeah, glamping being the, the pinnacle of, of luxury camping. Like caravan's not quite there. The bus would no, be not quite ridiculous yeah like the stereotypical glamping is you pay to have someone else like there's plenty of places you can go stay in and around like you know the barossa or mclaren vale or whatever it's glamping it's a glamping experience where someone set up the tent which is semi-permanent anyway the bed set up you've got all the creature comforts you've got a heater you've got the food everything's done by everyone else yeah, it's room it's, service you can do it. yeah it's basically like a hotel but it's the walls are thinner that's real glamping. Is that even camping? So it's. I feel like there's got to be a component of camping for it to be called glamping. It to me, that's just a hotel. Well, oh, well camping is sleeping outdoors out of an actual fixed building. But it's semi-permanent. So one could argue that it's not a. It is a fixed building. I think everyone's definition is different, and this is kind of what I was going to get at which is my definition is different because i've done the real rough of just camping out of a backpack mat on the floor hook you over the top <laughs> yeah like, not quite fucking sleeping really rough in it like fucking being homeless yeah. but <laughs> you technically are for a few days <laughs> yeah when you're backpack hunting and you really are just roughing it living out of a backpack something like Having a caravan, that seems like clamping. Whereas once upon a time, you know, you, perspective. When you yeah, perspective. When you're when you're young and you go away with the family and dad set up sets up the big eight man tent and you know, that's camping. Sure. And then you sort of progress and you start doing it for yourself and then you get to backpack hunting and like, well, that's really fucking rough in it. Setting up the tent, you know, with the kids, whatever, I think that's still camping. But for me, anytime you've just got some permanent structure or structure on wheels where you can just fucking roll in, pop it open, and you you set up, I reckon that's glamping. 
Can you imagine these days, like, tents have come a long way. Like, we as a family had, like, an eight-man tent as well, like a, like a three-room. And it took, that thing took, like, an hour and a half, two hours to set up. You fucking know. Yeah. Like, they all like, like, just being like, fuck me. All the color coding on each pole, and you had to find the right pole, and some of the stickers are gone, and you're like, fuck, which one's this for? And that yeah. was, I, can you imagine doing that these days? It's not, it's not a cross section of poles either. It's like, okay. There's a diagonal, there's a horizontal pole, there's, oh, oh. yeah. No, Each stuff. section requires two to three different poles. Yeah. Technology has come a long way in that regard, mm. like just in terms of the footprint that the packed up tent takes up because there was multiple bags of tent poles and fucking canvas yeah. and shit going on when I was young that dad set up and that tent was fucking 30 years old already. But that thing took forever. We had like different color electrical tape to mark all the poles because you're right, they just fucking get mixed up, whatever. Did you notice though that those old like eight person tents and things like that, they just didn't hold up in like any sort of adverse weather at all? Uh, I'd, I'd say the opposite, man. I'd say those things felt did it right. a lot more fucking solid than like nah. your lightweight shit these days. Now, nah, I got rained in so many times in those damn tents like wet and just like and you get this flapping at night from the the sheet the the fly sheet and i'll just be like oh this is a fucking nightmare like canvas if you can canvas the way to go yeah that's what i had great fucking big old canvas oh, tent. canvas yeah bloody oh, earth man i'm, I'm talking saying. i thought you're talking about one of those dome tents no fuck that. Oh, no. no 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 you know it's like you know those massive canvas tents that are like probably as almost as big as what Caleb's living in now, the house. Like, <laughs> they were huge. Like an old 11 by 11. Maybe. I'm not sure. No, you remember the old 11 by 11s? This is an army reference. Yeah. Is. Yeah. Is it, is it an army reference? <laughs> yeah, yeah, should yeah. I know this? <laughs> the old 11 by 11. Yeah. All right. I'll get you. All right. Those are better. But no, I'm, I thought you were meaning the old dome tents. No. Those no, no, things no. were fucking terrible, no, man. Stuff that. I hated those things. The, 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 like, the, the, the three-way uh, um, knuckle, and then you're putting a pole in. And... Yeah, maybe. No. I think imagine like aluminium was... poles. You got to slot them all together, and then like no, but that was connector push, pieces. Push, yeah, connector pieces. There was corners and connectors, and yeah, oh knuckle. And yeah. some of them are like sprung loaded together, but then the springs break and all that sort of shit. And you got like rubber loops. You got to like stretch over stuff and. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Those things took forever. I don't know how any parent had the patience to take anyone away camping. Those that's probably things. why you only went camping, or, you know, a couple times a year. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but they 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 felt like a little bit sturdier than they're fucking a lot heavier, but they were sturdier. See, that's the other thing. And this is why I think like camping and and I guess the the technology behind camping's come a long ways because guys are doing it more often and for longer periods i mean as a kid you go away like once a year for like a week or 10 days you could sort of push through the arduous and tedious activities of setting up one of those mind-boggling tents and roughing it for the 10 days because then you're going to have 11 11 and a half months of you know back home but now i mean when you break it down how many times have you been camping this year or well, for us, it's hunting. But well, every time we camp, we camp, basically. Yeah. So mm. this year alone is like doesn't, you know, eat, if not more. Yeah. Versus when you're a kid, you might go Christmas holidays, Easter holidays. Yeah. That's it. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe you maybe. go one or the other, pretty much, as a kid. Yeah. You know. And then there's those fancy kids whose parents own caravans, and they just went away every fucking long weekend. But hang on. This is where I disagree with you, right? You said before that anything on wheels is glamping. To me. Now, I, to com- me. I completely disagree because watching some of these guys that are full drive traveling on the road with caravans, they've still got to set up stuff. They just want to be able to pull into somewhere late night and then just walk into a door and go to sleep and not have the hassle. Glamp. It's not like there's still no adversity of setting up or organizing things with a caravan there's less but it's still there what fucking chocking the wheels and connecting the fucking sink and leveling the ton up you might have a pop top that's glamper bro this is where i like like because i roll with just a swag and a basic setup 
But that's where I kind of like rolling with that basic setup because I'm set up in 20 minutes, 15. And then I sit there, have a beer, and watch everyone else set up. Okay. Yeah, but you also, when, like, the rain's fucking... When the rain's are here, Ma, fucking hell, you, you'll end up crawling into someone else's structure that they've spent all the hard work up and shelter exactly. to go and, and relax. So just, if you remove those... Me, no, but if, if you remove but, the aspect of having other people with the gear, would you stay basic or would you sort of advance man, it? I c it's satisfying lying in the swag and it's pissing down. Like that sound of fucking, it's kind of like a tin roof. Uh, all, all day long. That's fine. Like fucking, even if you're not in a swag and you're under a shelter. How are you going to cook? It's the same shit. If that's the case. Like you just don't eat. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to eat. You've just been lying down all day. Yeah, okay, you got 10 days straight of this. When has it rained 10 days straight in Australia? Oh, mate, you could. Never say never. We could. And I feel like that's what a lot of people pack for when they're camping is the what if. Okay, the weather's forecast for good, patchy rains, but what if it does fucking come in for a few days or, or two days straight uh, and you've got to hunker down? All right, we're going to need some bit more advanced shelter, you know? Yeah, like, I probably should update, but I <laughs> I guess the thing I'll probably update for is a gazebo. Oh, you go gazebo? Yeah, probably. Fucking splashing out, mate. Jesus. But that's like simple's good. Yeah, simple is good. I prefer simple. Like I think is you've got you you've got setups for different situations. So we've got our backpack hunting setup where we've all got a sleeping bag, we've all got a sleeping mat. The shelter is usually just a hoochie over the top of us. Or your fucking fancy ass bloody things were like fucking called. Yeah. What, what are they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the Alton's are good. You've I thought you were talking about fucking tent. Yeah, I thought you were talking about his tent. Yeah, you two have got your Altons with your fucking Booker configurations, like your origami fucking whatever. Just put a fucking hoochie over yourself and stop the rain coming on. It's all good. Uh, that's our most basic setup, I would say. Then you've got your swag. We've both mm -hmm. we've all got double swags. I've got a single swag. If I don't feel the need for a double or space saving. That's a good setup. I generally, if I go somewhere camping, my go-to is my fucking awning out from the from the ute. Set up a swag underneath. Cook out of the back of the ute. With I'll take a gas bottle generally if I don't have a fire. But even when there is a fire, I prefer just to cook on a fucking stove. Yeah, it's just quicker, more convenient. Water. Jerry. Oh, he's knocking the swing off. No more swing. No, 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 no more no, no, swing no, no, off. No, no. Fucking. No, 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 no. Fallow stakes. That's for fucking you. deer camp times. I don't own one, so I'm not going to take one camping at the beach like I did the other weekend, am I? But if you did have one, would you take it to the beach? No, because it's just Wait. fucking too much of a carry on. If you're there, sure, because you'll be the man with the swing on, swing off. You'll set it up. Exactly. But for convenience, a gas bottle and the cooker. I got a new cooker. And this is bought me for my birthday. I specified I want one that fits my two fry pans side by side. I don't want three burners. I want two. The thing's fucking awesome. I haven't seen it. No, you, haven't, you haven't seen it. It's fucking good. It's even got a light. Will we see it this weekend? A motion detection light. Should I bring it? Yes. No. Nah, well, we've got a fire. I've got the bloody... Haynes Engineering. Oh, yeah. Josh has got his little cooking box. Yeah, no. Bring it because he'll fuck it up and we've got to set it up properly. No, I'm not going to bring pans. Fuck that. Anyway. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing that I like about the little box that those little butane burners fit into is the fact that you don't need pans. You just cook on a you just, surface. You just pull the thing out and that's it. So no, no pots and pans, you're good to go. And then if you want to build, like, boil water, you just rip the cooker out and all your water. Yeah. Sorry, just as a side note. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And then we don't, I mean, we do get fancier than that because you own a RV3 tent. Mm. It's not as fancy as you've got, though. If you want to roll out the full creature comforts, you know, you've got a camping fucking table, you've got your camping chair. Look, even if I had an awning, so the whole thing about the RV3 was so I could have an awning or, or somewhere to sort of brand or whatever you want to call it to sit underneath if it gets a bit rainy or a bit of shade. Um, 
and I will buy a car awning one day. But even if I had a car awning and I was taking all the misses away, I would most definitely pack the RV3 because you can stand up in it to get changed. You're not having to bend down. Well, and you can hook up your RV3 to your car awning as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it kind of. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can see is just don't yeah. camp close enough to people where you can just fucking get changed out in the open. No, nah, it's not. It's, it's not me. I don't really care. But look, when you're with your lady, yeah, she might want a bit of privacy, man, no matter what. All right. So when I take my missus away, then I'll take the double swag. She'll either get changed in that or just in the open behind like a car door. Yeah, because you can get changed in a king swag quite fine. Yeah. Double swag is not to stand up. Yeah. Yeah. lay down. But laying down. See, this is like where you stand, stand the swag up and you're good. So uh, this is sort of where stand the swag up. <laughs> Jesus, so <laughs> delayed. <laughs> Never try that. More have to give that a go this week then. Um, so this is where, as I'm getting older, I'm just like, yeah, okay, I can I can get into this as well if I if I have the ability to take it because Caleb, you're right. You know, the situation depicts on what you're going to take and how you're going to set up and your comfort the level of comfort. So I'm like, well, if I can, okay, I'll do it because. I'd also like to stand up and not have to fucking do the old bum wiggle to put pants on or whatever. And then there's also the fact of using, we've got a blow up mattress, which is super duper comfortable. And look, I'm not opposed to roughing it and going on the floor. That's fine. But if I don't need to, why would I? And really, yeah, RV3 takes about just as long as swag, as swag to set up. I mean, you, you pretty much get it out, take it out of its bag, you fold out two arms, you get in it, and you stand it up. Uh, while you just pull this arm over and then lock the arms out, and it's that's pretty much it erect. And you go peg it. Knew <laughs> yeah, that was going. <laughs> so it's it's just as quick. Yes, it's a thousand times more expensive than a fucking swag, but it is nice. Nice to have these abilities to stand up, be more space if it's raining, put your gear away. It's, it's quite. It's yeah. It's pretty good. It's it's good when you got it, but it's fucking long. It's but it's like the king swags are take up quite a lot of space thickness wise as well. So those ones are like half that. Those RV threes yeah. or whatever it is. They're yeah. they're quite skinny. Yeah, they are. But super skinny, to be honest. Over a well, you don't you don't have your mattress in there, so that's obviously taking down a fair bit of mm. volume. True. The other thing is you've got that awning once again that you can set up. And if you wanted to go off and full drive, you're not having to sit down or set up and pack up your, your car awning. You know, you've just got your tent there and you can burn around and come back, do whatever. And this is something that I'll find. two seconds to pack up an awning though. Well, not the way you configure it because you generally put your tarp over, um, attached to your awning almost off one side and create a wall. Yeah, it has a side. If I put the side up. So you're basically having to take down your all of your shelter if you wanted to move and move the car but not move the camp. Fair enough. Fair, fair call. Yeah. There's a trade-off. There's pros and cons of everything. Yeah. That's like the trade-off of rooftop tent. Yeah. Because you can't sort of just take the car somewhere quickly. You have to sort of pack it up and then go. I can't get around it. See, once again, if you go like the clamshell, it's two seconds to pack up. But yeah, you're still having to pack up. Yeah. Um, and 365 10. days a year of fucking shit fuel economy. No, you. <laughs> that's if, what if it was me, I would like just strap it up into the garage. And then when you want it, you just put it back on. Yeah. Yeah. Probably take no more, no, no more time than putting your swag on the roof and strapping it down. I think yeah. on your roof. I can't ever see myself doing that, firstly, because you're carrying this heavy fucking thing around all the time and fucking your fuel economy. I do like the ones where people have them, like there's a bit of a stand you can set up on your tray, so mm. it's still it, like... Yeah, I've seen that. Long, but then you're sacrificing being able to put anything in your fucking tray. Mm. So you're committing to that. You can, you're sacrificing either way. You're either sacrificing fuel economy or you're sacrificing being able to use your tray. But, if but that, again, you'd, you'd sort of make that detachable because you don't use it really that hot, like that much through the year compared to just using your car. Let's leave them on all the time, though. They, they do, but I feel 
like the once again you can take them off four bolts and they're off and you're good you know like it's not a big deal i think the trailer is a better option for your rooftop tent a rooftop tent on a trailer i've seen a few setups it's yeah cheap than a camper trailer so camper trailer you're paying some coin for but if you have a trailer already it's and you can put a rooftop tent on that then that just sits in your fucking garage you can deck it yeah, out you can chuck a frame on it you can leave all your camping gear stored in the trailer and then when you do want to go camping fucking hook it up away you go that's that's a good idea actually how are you going to tie your boat the boat goes upside down over the rooftop tent put a tow ball on the back of the camper <laughs> 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 Just have a convoy. <laughs> Two trailers, yeah, bloody hell. See, I've seen a couple of guys do what you do. I think there's a what there's I do wild or what you were yeah. just um, okay. There was a fella, I think Wild Reaches, he has a clam shell on his toy hauler. So his toy hauler, so trailer, camping trailer, it's got quad bike or boat. I think it might be Wild Reaches, I can't remember, but he's either got his quad bike, his boat, or his quad bike and motorbike in the back and then a tent on top i can't quite remember someone had it on youtube that is a good way to go but then you're having to tow a trailer through full drive yeah but that's not that hard it's a fairly light trailer it's not like all right can you imagine doing the right yeah but the right trailers can be towed pretty well in full driving big high country start of the year with a trailer would you do it A lot of the tracks that we went Vic High Country would be fine, apart from that one. No, yeah. no, no you, 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 you're, not, you're not hearing what I'm saying. The three or four bad parts or sketchy parts, would you do it? Yes. You would. I feel like a trailer is not, like, especially a lightish sort of a trailer, it's not really that much of a fucking, it's not holding you back that much. You're not towing a car trailer, bro. Yeah, it's not a caravan. It's not a fucking camper trailer like it's just a trailer with some gear in it and a fucking rooftop tent okay if you need to turn around and you've got bush either side detail miles and miles or a fucking take it off you've just gone through yeah okay take it off so there's another thing to do or just reverse well, there's your other advantage leave your camp set off set up and go do some forward driving and then come back to it come back to it yeah but you still yeah. got to get in there which is not always the easiest i mean there oh, was some horse folk in some outstanding areas when we were through the big old country this year but a couple of those horse floats i was like um how the fuck are you getting out yeah but that main track in there was fucking yeah fine. the main tracks are fine just we yeah, didn't know about the main track but past that main track look man every man and his dog was chewing it up with their cars and bikes and horses yeah they also had f trucks i'm pretty sure yeah they had, they had f- some decent f-150s so they've got some horsepower to tow their horses at least one of 70 i can see that ones well, look, I'll, I'll get you but to me it's still like towing something's a headache oh again and then it, you know you might you're saying that it's light catchy but a light trailer can be a hindrance at times um yeah there's always a downfall to anything man like especially 79. with water crossings like with a light trailer yeah you know, like, it, it, yeah, it floats, and and if it's, it's a win-win. fast moving, or reasonably fast moving crossing, you know, you might be up shit creek or down shit creek, I should say. Look, it's it's down to your setup. Let's be honest. Oh, down to your situation, down to what you you go to is you might adapt it, but if you're typically doing X, then you'll you'll customize your setup to suit that whatever you're doing most commonly. There's one thing I do like, say, for example, with uh, all drive 24-7, which I do like watching on YouTube. A lot of people fucking whinge about the fact that a lot of the time they're just fucking smashing up these crazy hills and, like, up rocks, fucking getting bogged, doing gnarly shit. They're never towing anything. Mm. And they've got – they're on fucking 35s and they're quarter chopped the fucking back of the thing and, like, yeah, set up to do that. But then generally there's someone with a bit more of a boring rig in there. Someone's got the D-Max with the fucking rooftop tent and mm. whatever else in there. So it's throwing a broad cross-section of 
well, not a broad cross section, but at least a few different setups. Someone's on 31s with a touring setup. Someone else is on 35s with a crazy full driving setup. They're getting up the same hill. Someone might need a bit more winching. But then they've got another, like it's called off grid, I think, like another series that they do on the same channel, which is purely just them cruising around with caravans on the back. They're not doing the gnarly fucking rock climbing shit. But they're they're still doing a bit of full driving. They're trying to get, they're getting through some arduous terrain, but they're towing. Might have to watch that actually. Yeah, so it's tips. Yeah, off the off grid one's good. The one I watched the other day, they did they they've done the Nullarbor and whatever else, and they came back into South Australia and they did the um, Air Peninsula. Um, so like some good shit through there. It's not like you fucking. Panel bashing bloody shit that Sean O and bloody Jock and <laughs> give River Road sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just more no, touring than anything. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. touring. It's still a bit of you know arduous fucking full driving, but it's generally they're doing it more of a pace that the average person would do if they go on holiday. Mm-hmm. So at least they're showing both worlds. But again, that's different setups for different situations. So, okay, the way we do things now. Is there something that you'd change or you'd want to upgrade that's heading towards maybe the glamp, more glamping style of things? Well, I put an extra piece of foam in both my swags. <laughs> we need to actually get a we need to get a trailer. That's what we need. Uh, it makes a fucking difference, bro. <laughs> I remember you saying that foam. last time. Yeah, like my my. Um, double swag the kings is a 70 mil mattress and i got an extra 50 mil piece of foam from just a foam place here in adelaide oh, cut yeah. that size and put it in there so now i've got 120 mils it's fucking comfy no, so all i got left over i chucked it in the single swag as well so now that's hell hella comfy yeah. and the bag and packs up packs up in their phone it's in the bag fine like i pack up my good thing about the king swags is even though they're reasonably cheap piece of shit mine's <laughs> lasted me fucking five six years so far no drama yeah mine's more yeah and the thing is just fucking weather the thing when you first get it and then make sure if it gets wet inside you dry it out when you get home it's simple right you can't go wrong yeah mine's been six years and i've fucked up that a few times (laughs) there you go you still don't have mold (laughs) uh no i think i had like i had mold on at one point time you I've got rid it. of it, but like on the sticker of the King sticker, either side, it's still like you could see where the mold was. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it doesn't happen anymore. But yeah, there's been a few times where you've come back from hunting or whatever, and it's pissed down, and you've forgotten to set it back up to dry it out. Yeah. And then a month later, you're like, oh fuck, <laughs> and you go go check on it, and it's yeah, it's you catch it sort of early enough that it doesn't fuck your swag, but it's sort of set in. But yeah. the bag size is super generous. So when I yeah. do Red Ocean Road with my missus, we were getting fucked off with setting up and packing up every single night, the sleeping bags and everything. So we just, like the big join together double king swing. Yeah, leave them in there. Bags, fucking the king's sleeping, sleeping bags, bags that zip together, which are like two sleeping bags in one. Super yeah. warm, pretty fucking thick, bulky. We would just leave them in the swag and roll it up like every day for a setup and it still fit in the bag yeah, yeah. No, that's pr- works pretty good those king sleeping bags man they're fucking mint they're warm as fuck like too warm yeah and because you can zip them together and both sleep in there you've got sharing your body warmth it's just it's prime you can take out the yeah. the winter or like, the inner inner lining yeah well. yeah i've done that a few times like if i've gone away with my girls, I'll give them the two inners and then I'll just have the outers to sleep in. Yeah. Or vice versa or whatever. But yeah, I get, I roast in that with both <laughs> in there. See, I'm surprised you do them up. I don't, we don't do them up when we go away. I don't do them up now because I've fucked one of the zips, but. <laughs> <laughs> early days, the yeah, is like, oh, let's cocoon together. Uh, cocoon. So, so nice. oh. you can spoon and cuddle. All right. So you put some shitty fucking. Uh, foam in your swag. Yeah, because I'm getting what, old and I what's fucking next? like some comforts. Like, are you are you thinking ever, you're ever going to want to stand up to put your clothes on? 
I mean, I do. I get out the swag and fucking get dressed. It is nice standing up to get dressed. I'll give you that. Mm. And if you're a shy guy and you don't want people to see you dirty, then yeah. Is there anything that you do to like enhance your experience? Glamour. Well, for us, for us, like the one thing that my family does going Easter camping is a portable shower. Ooh, That's yeah. a hot water service shower thing. You can pump out of a river and that. They're they're pretty good. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm talking about. All right, now we're we're heading into glamping territory. You've got a shower, you're not camping. Oh man, you're glamping. I hundred percent want a joke a shower. A shower is good. Like, let's be honest, there's nothing yeah. worse than four days of your own crust and dick cheese, and you're just like, fuck this, I want a shower. Yeah, hundred. It's four hundred bucks for a unit, man. Oh, that's it, and then it just runs on LPG and water, and you're good. I mean, I've always owned one of those like. Bag, solar bag ones like with the, the black bags where you just put them in the sun all day yeah it's good in summer not in winter mm. yeah, but it, well, yeah i've always just... owned one and i've used it i used it a fair bit in the flinders actually a couple of trips and i just hang it up in a tree in a riverbank and go have a shower a mm. little bit awkward if someone's hiking through the fucking creek <laughs> which happened to me <laughs> <laughs> is that a fucking snowman in the desert Oh no, it's just an Irishman. Yeah, the Flinders is probably not the place to fucking <laughs> get in the nud to shower in a creek bed. No. There's too many people. There's people everywhere there. And there'd be places where you think there'd be no one around. <laughs> like what, yeah. What um system are you using for your family trips? Do you remember? Uh no, nah, no idea. No idea. I could find it out for you. It's propane, isn't it? Uh, yes, so it's hooked up to a gas, then it runs off car battery. Yeah. 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 That's um, cool. Yeah. And it kicks in when the water flows. It doesn't actually stay on. Would you, would you, is that something that you'd go down the line for, like, you know, deer hunting or camping yourself? Yeah. Well, this property actually has a point for the gas and a point for the power at this mm -hmm place we're going to yeah if we had a jenny in a gas bottle you could have hot water showers there oh you mean this weekend yeah i thought you meant yeah, yeah. Way but um going. but do we want to bring it up here we can the gas bottle do yeah for hot water yeah that's actually a fucking good idea you love it you fucking froth a hot shower i do man i do i don't know why you like being so clean around us uh, look, I can deal with it backpack camping. Like, my brain just switches off. Like, if we're, you know, backcountry hunting or whatever, that part of my brain, yeah, for some reason will switch off. But Personal when hiking, but... when you've got a a stone fucking building in front of you, I'm like, no, nah, yeah, you should have fucking hot and cold water. You're always a little bit weird, Josh, but... I'll bring the fucking gas bottle. I'll bring my new cooker. I'll bring the I'm not sure if you need the power to actually use the gas bottle properly, but yeah, we'll see. Do you want the Jenny? Oh, I need we need to get a quiet. Need to get a quiet Jenny. Yeah, no. no. See, I was uh, talking about like enhancing your glamping and things. I've got a battery in the back of my car, but I was thinking about getting a power box, and this almost solidifies the fact that I should get a power box because in those huts, okay, if you don't have a Jenny or whatever. But you've got your LED light strips. Well, last time we were running it out to the car, so we're basically basically running it through two doors to get out of the car. But if you had a battery box, you could just put it in the living room, put the lights up, and you're good. Yeah. Well, oh, shit. Maybe I should do that this week. But then, actually, actually, oh, like I Tech World, I Tech the Honey Badger. Who does he rep for? I tech world, yeah. I tech world's underwear. got a, I think, it's <laughs> yeah. up to eighty percent uh, sale at the moment. Uh, do it. Those sorts of things. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, but cool. Get get me one because I need one for the Ute as well. You want hardwired? These are battery boxes, like thumpers. Mm. Do it, or do you I want? Need, I need something. I need something for the Ute. If I was in your position, I'd just hardwire you. Maybe. Get work to pay for it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. It's worth. It's worth a crack. Let's work out how to be comfortable but have a good time. 
Well, this is another one. Fuck you, so I'm going to add this in. Just do it. And that is if we're at deer camp, not backpack or backcountry or whatever, but if we're at deer camp or any sort of like half swanky camping, I now like my toilet seat. Just the toilet seat. My toilet seat, little frame thing, so you don't have to go scouting around for a nice out. You can just literally just walk out. Yeah, well, there's a shitter where we are this weekend. Right, like obviously not using the amenities if there is none. Like there's no toilet itself. Josh has a knitted toilet seat cover that he takes with him. <laughs> That's actually a good Thank idea. You. Then I wouldn't get a fucking cold ass when I put my cheeks down. You're gonna fucking shit on it, bro. What does that sound? <laughs> fucking <laughs> no, my toilet. I, that I, 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 honestly, for, <laughs> for 36 bucks, man, this toilet, I can't stress how good it is. And I bought it from BCF, and it's just like this weird little um, scissor frame, and then you put your toilet seat on it, just clicks on, and you're good. Oh, yeah, digging it. That's another thing collapsing midship. <laughs> now, I've tested it. I've tested. I mean, if you're like a fucking buffalo wearing a dress, I'd probably reinforce it, but I'd stick to squatting. Squatting over a hole. Yeah. yeah. You, you would not spend $36 on this thing just to make your life a little bit easier. Like, for the amount of times I'm out in the bush and have to squat. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. No, I'm happy <laughs> no, to just squat. No. I'm happy to just go through the fucking. And my body does this thing where it's like, yeah, okay, we're not doing two shits a day. This is oh, as, soon as, it, as soon as I go out <laughs> bush, I body shuts down for that. Yeah, it's like yeah. one shit every three days. I'm like, what happened? Like, normally I shit twice a day. Fucking once a week, like. <laughs> but yeah, on, on normal cases, once a day to the clock, like. But yes, yeah, it's, it's just weird. Like, I was, it was like that in the army as well. Um, you go out bush and you'd be like, Go once for the two-week trip. Yeah, but I feel like that one time, like, because I get it as well, like your body shutting down. But that one time, I'm just like, nah, yeah, I'm set. I'll, I'll just take my little frame, walk out. I don't have to look for anything. It could be pitch black, so I'm not looking for a, the perfect spot. Just pick a nice secluded area, dig a hole, put the frame in. Good to go. Yeah. Any cleaning necessary? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm have to carry on then. Is there cleaning involved? If you have to fucking clean any sort of stand or bucket. Oh, I thought you meant clean your ass. Well, oh, what the of ass? course you have to clean your <laughs> ass, man. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no, no. So, like, you don't have to clean the toilet. You know, depending on if you're explosive or not, then you may have to clean the legs. No, nah, see, I thought about that, and I thought, fuck, because there was a time where I think I figured out I might be a little bit lactose intolerant and I was having some explosive fucking, you know, diarrhea. Um, and we, it was about the time when I bought the thing and I was like, shit, I'm going to have to clean these legs off. Nah, I'll try it, see how I go. Because it's sort of like an open frame. So you could also get it onto your legs. And I was sort of a bit cautious. I'm like, oh, is this going to work? Nah, no dramas whatsoever. Have not. Had to clean the thing once. Nice. So, yeah, I highly recommend yeah. it for some reason. Fucking good for you. Right? Cool. Well, I feel like none of us have, have like, come out with any whoppers of moving into the glamping side of things. You were sitting there all week talking about, you know, how you like creature comforts, and your creature comfort is an extra 50 mil fucking mat. Right. Yep. That's a creature comfort, man, Mike. Just fucking shows you how hard I am. Just because yours is a fucking ring, just because yours is a ring cushion, man. You've come a long way from the wimp mat, Josh. You have RV three in your fucking. You'd be five hundred mil fucking thick fucking air mattress you got. I've got to admit that air mattress you bought me from a birthday, or like over the wimp mat, or it's, it's it's not too bad. You'd hope it would be better than the wimp mat. It's, it's not too yeah. bad at all. Your, your, your back more. probably would be way better if you had that earlier. Yeah, yeah, could could be, it could be. Um, I got to admit, I actually love that thing. Camping this year, we we're out in the high country, under the out and had it laid out. You know when we got bogged in because it was raining. Yeah, I was laying there. I'm like, this is actually fucking nice. <laughs> well, exactly. As terrible as the situation was, we were fucking bogged and 
No, 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 before that, when we were on the on the mountain, on the oh, before plateau. we got bogged, we were still on the plateau hunting. We yeah, hadn't moved yet. no, that was nice. It was raining during the day. Yeah, yeah, we had a hunger in there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah that was that was nice. There. It was nice. We should oh, we should have stayed there, Josh. Yeah, we should have. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We left deer to chase deer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, didn't shoot any. Yeah, we learned a valuable lesson that trip. Yeah, don't fall drive at night. Yeah. yeah. Don't leave deer. To find and it. You know, we all could have got, it. got venison here. Oh, well, we could have. If we you could've. shot one, Josh. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, let's fucking kill something this weekend, all right? Just. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean it. Um, I want meat. Anyway. I want fucking meat. Look, I will. Oh, you be getting meat this weekend. I will add so. one disclaimer to our <laughs> weekend of hunting. They fucking told the place. Not that long ago. So we don't know what we're up for. It's probably yeah. shit. Yeah. It, it may be hard going to be, to be honest. I would expect for some real quick fucking opportunity. Like you're going to, you're going to see him and I'd go into the hunt with this mindset and it's not always done, but I'd say once we're out of that tree lawn, that's it. You're just fucking ready. And this is why mm-hmm. I kind of said we should be there earlier and just set so up. with daybreak because if it has been culled, they'll be nocturnal. Yeah, fuck oath. No. Uh, yeah. But you like, it's going to be fucking some snap shooting, man. They're going to, judging from last time, and last time they gave you fuck all. Fuck all. Fuck all. Yeah. It's going to be so sketchy. It's not funny. That's why. Regardless, it's going to be a fucking good weekend. Yeah, yeah it will be, of course. Hmm. I think we should just be set up, ready for them to come out, rather than us walking along, disturbing them. We should just be lying in wait. I think this time, probably a good opportunity, yeah. uh, good way to do it. To be honest, man. And let's be honest, it's not that bad just sitting there versus. Uh, well, that's the thing because it's only a day. We've got the opportunity to just sit and wait in the morning, and then if nothing's presenting itself, we can go wander the flats. Correct. Um, mm-hmm. Options. Options and variety, such a good thing. Yeah. Anyway, how'd you go with the eight percent fucking bourbon, mate? It's actually nice, man. I'm pretty keen to get on it this weekend because I'm not supposed to be drinking right here. Um, what? Oh, because uh, of surgery, so I've got antibiotics. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> don't don't drink whilst you have your antibiotics. Emphasizing the sparkling water. Oh, look, two beers in drinking. Oh. I'd cast like a six packs of drinking. Fair enough. Anyway, that's right. Have you want? I ain't fucking wet nursing you this weekend when you've got an infected bum hole. <laughs> Just let me tell you that. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, mate, for putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we definitely need to try the twelve percenters, and I think we should make it a good weekend. Let's do it. Let's have a good weekend. Let's have for some. Sure. Let's kill some fucking deer and get some meat. Back in the fridge. And let's hope all you good motherfuckers out there are doing the same thing this weekend. And if you're not, we'll fucking make plans to do it because it's Tuesday. So get out there, come Friday, after work, fucking get after it. Do it. Fire up, you pelicans. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, thanks for listening. Have a great week, everyone. And, yeah, like Josh said, get out there on the weekend and fucking get it done. Ooh. A bit quick there at the end. Be like, fucking let's wrap it up. Let's go. Uh, no, no, that's, uh, oh, I, think it's I agree. It's two to one vote here. So Read the room. <laughs> You're outvoted, cunt. Ooh, all right, you motherfuckers. Catch ya. Yes, guys. Catch ya. Catch ya. Yeah.